Welcome to another edition of Radio Gunk. And today we decided we are going to just be all about Fred. And, um, <laughs> and. Someone's gotta be. Somebody's gotta be. And, you know, he has. Certainly not his wife. Certainly <laughs> not the show. <laughs> he has not been the butt of our, um, ire yet. Uh, but he kind of deserves it. I had done a thread last week about Fred's Instagram and him going to South Africa. And then I started to kind of dig deeper into the Instagram and it's very self-serving. He's very full of himself. He's, you know, very look at me all of a sudden, which is kind of weird for Fred. Maybe he's going through a late midlife crisis. I'm not really sure what's going on with him, but we're here to help you move along with Fred. And for all you people that join the thread where we talked about doing the podcast tonight, you know, there's somebody that still really dig Fred and think that he's an integral part of the, uh, (laughs) <laughs> true he's he is only third worst at his job You're right. <laughs> and we're here to tell you differently so um john and dennis and benjamin all were contributors to the clip array that we have this week so i'm really excited to kind of get to that uh, a lot of it is very vintage so there's many of you that probably haven't heard uh, a couple of the things that we're going to be playing in a long long time Let's talk about Fred real quickly for a second. So Fred was born in 1955 as Fred Leo Nukas. As we know, he changed his name at some point in the 90s, ostensibly because he he didn't like his original dad, who apparently was very abusive. And then the mother, he left the family when Fred was five or something, and he had really bad feelings about him. And then the mother remarried somebody whose last name was Norris. And that's how he became Fred Norris. Fred grew up in Connecticut. I think it's close to Massachusetts, some hick town. It's like I never heard of it. He went to Western Connecticut State University, which has an acceptance rate of almost 70%. <laughs> That's what my uh, <laughs> and he didn't just change his name to Fred Norris. He changed no. Eric Norris. Eric, right. Eric. He went to school approximately an hour away from his home. Then his first job was in Hartford at WCCC, which was 10 minutes from his home. He met Howard Stern in the spring of 1979, and then Stern left WCCC in early 1980. Uh, Fred then left the station in early 1981. He took a job at WAQY in Springfield, which is 47 minutes from his home, then joined (laughs) Howard in October of that same year. And he was also still in college when he was at WCCC working the overnight time slot. Yes. So uh, other than maybe about six months at another job in Springfield, he has only known working with Howard, pretty much like the the rest of them. One of his early comments, and the weird thing is, is like, okay, you can look at the Fred Norris wiki, and and I'm going to read it to you really, really quickly, and just make a real quick comment about it. His biological father left home when Fred was five, but those the first few years were turbulent. There was always tension and rage. Norris remembers my father had an alcohol problem. When dad came home, he hid in the closet because there was always something going on you'd rather not be a part of. Fred spent most of his early childhood alone. When his older brother Robert wasn't using Fred as a human punching bag, the brother wanted nothing to do with him. So Fred would escape by reading books, taking long bicycle rides, or watching lots of afternoon TV reruns. Whence came his encyclopedic knowledge of classic 50s TV? Every person on the show of Howard's, even Robin, at least had a father figure to guide them. He says, me, I was on my own. Despite his lack of guidance, Norris managed to navigate his adolescence without major incident. When Norris was 13, his mother remarried. His stepfather's name was Louis Norris, a cabinet maker. When Norris credits finally making his mother happy, and unlike his father, his stepfather generally treated Norris with respect. Between the ages of 5 and 13, basically he's trying to tell us that we don't know the hell that his life was. But I think that has profoundly affected him as an adult. And isn't it funny that no one's really curious? Because it comes up all the time, like, oh, Fred, he beats all of us with his tragedy. And it sort of like baits you to go, well, tell me more. Tell me more. And no one cares. And exactly what I read to you is almost verbatim what is in every single history of Fred Norris that is out there. Every single one has the exact same words. uh, on the history of Howard Stern, he says he didn't get to watch TV as a kid because his mom didn't allow it oh, because his brother didn't do well. So this official wiki says all he did was watch TV. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. And that's how he got his scary knowledge mm. of 50s TV, which I, I don't really see. I, I, I've never seen this scary knowledge of 50s TV. No, not at all. I haven't seen any. I haven't the Monsters was the 60s. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
Ben, you want to you wanna give us a little synopsis or something? If we want to start with audio, do we want to start with Earth Dog Fred, which was how <laughs> yeah, he yeah. was presented to us Definitely. for Definitely. a number of years? Yeah. When Fred joined Howard and Robin at DC 101, he replaced a guy named Earth Dog something. I can't remember what it was. And Fred took on the name Earth Dog and also took on this character where he talks in this gravelly, deep voice and he's aggravated all the time. And I chose this clip because Howard credits himself with inventing reality television. And so, therefore, what you hear on the Howard Stern show is supposed to be reality. So I thought this Hmm. clip was especially revealing of the kind of reality radio Howard was doing. That'll be unusual. <laughs> Last time we got down there, we were winging the whole thing, but this time we got we got it all prepared. You're going to wear your PJs again? No, I'm going to wear a dress. Ooh. And Freddie's going to wear a dress, too. <laughs> I ain't wearing no dress. <laughs> yes, you are. It's part of the routine. That's not part of my job. It's 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 just show business, man. You got He sounds like um what's that cartoon dog that tells you to Rolf. like fight crime? McGruff. Oh, Mc- <laughs> McGruff. Like <laughs> McGruff. <laughs> so the funny thing is, though, Howard immediately running to wearing a dress. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, I mean, that was revealing too. How old is this? How old is this tape? This is Obviously, probably eighty-two. The beginning of eighty-two. Oh Obviously, an original, original master tape because none of ours from back then sounds nearly as good, right? I mean, all of us have like no. shitty recordings of this, so this is his master tape. And I love the picture because it shows the history of Howard Stern. He was told to sit down and shut up. He chose not to. And there's like yeah. a little eight-year-old boy with short hair with a mic in his hands and all these black kids kind of in the distance making fun of him. Wearing leather coats, ready to <laughs> steal his <Wow>. pants. <laughs> Sissy. Hey, look, man, when you were hired, you said you would do stuff like that. that I never really said I'd wear no dress. <laughs> you listen wow. to me. I'm going to say this once. I don't want any grief. You are wearing a dress down at the wax museum next week. I am not wearing a dress. I'll- is this original grooving? Is that what we're hearing? Wow. Right now? <laughs> this is horrible. Talk to you about this later. It's a bit. And you said you would do it. I never said anything about a dress. Hey, look, not Nancy Reagan. We'll talk about it later. Don't rile him up, Howard. We'll talk about what we'll wear down at the Wax Museum next week. You're wearing a dress. You're wearing a dress. No! You are? So this is Fred without Jackie's writing. Yeah. Literally, this is is the comedy genius that is Fred. And Howard. Oh, Howard, yeah, absolutely. We know how unfunny he is. (laughs) I'm wearing a dress. Get away from me, you idiot. Here we go. What did I tell you? You know he's just hitting the mic. Oh, get out of here! You idiot! Oh, no, we're in the ground! Get out of here, you idiot! <laughs> <laughs> I should talk like him. I should talk like him. Mickey. I have a whole mouth. It's like he's doing his Lucille Ball impression. <laughs> oh, Fred, you're so talented and crazy. Oh, Fred. <laughs> God, that's horrible. That's absolutely yeah. horrible. And that's how Fred always spoke uh, through WNBC, I believe. Are those Hartford tapes available at all? Full shows? Hartford, oh, no, I don't know about WCCC. that. There's, there's, a little, there's a little bit of Hartford, but it's really underplayed in the history of Howard Stern. You never hear it. I know. I know. I've never heard footage like that. Basically, Fred went with him to his next job. He became he is Earth Dog for how many years would you say that was? Probably four years or so he was Earth Dog. Amazing. Do you remember that um, the illustration that was promoting Howard? It was done by like some Mad Magazine guy. Right, right, right. So it's Howard in the phone booth because he used to call people. Fred is depicted as a dog, basically, like a dog wow. man. This was before he became King Norris, Martian. which apparently was because he was King of the Martians, which doesn't make is sense that, either. Is that is that yes. why they call him that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. He's the man from Had no idea that it was a show reference. Yes. So Fred changes his name. I remember the reaction was complete and utter shock because no one there knew that he changed his name to Eric. And it took years before they even knew. (laughs) Exactly. It wasn't like it was last week. The weird thing was two years later. It had been two or four years even. (laughs) But um, if you want to stick with early Fred just before we move on to like XRK Fred, I don't know if people realize that for a couple months, Fred – Gary and Al Rosenberg took over the Howard Stern show after Howard was fired from WNBC. So Fred assumed the Howard role 
<clears throat> and uh, he and Gary and Al Rosenberg did a rap parody <laughs> that I've included in this. That you got to hear. This was this is Fred without Jackie. This is Fred without Howard. This is what Fred would be doing for comedy. <laughs> I'm Fred. I'm Al. I'm Gary. And you might think we're slobs with all the butts we have to kiss to keep our phony jobs. So excuse us while we grovel. We know it may sound strange. We'd spit on dandy and mutilate Bambi for the right amount of change. Wow. My name is Fred, but you thought I was dead. And I'm begging for my job, please. I'm much too young to be standing in line for a date, old Fred. And welfare cheese, I'm just one step away from the poverty line. Don't push me out the door. It's either this or working for an Indian guy in a 7-Eleven store. I can't, I can't, I can't. Wow. <laughs> wow. Those are the, uh, the you know, the fat boys and Curtis Blow, that kind of, you know. That was, that was like Herbie, Herbie Hancock. Herbie Rocket, Hancock, right, right, right. right. <laughs> Al Rosenberg is the uh, the missing beastie boy. I'm just going to finish the name wow. change thing. So November 13, 2006, Norris was again asked about his motivation for the change of his name. Norris revealed that he changed his surname to that of his kindly stepfather in order to remove from his life any association with his biological father. Norris further explained that his mother wanted to name him Eric at birth, but that his biological father had not allowed it because Eric was the name of his mother's former boyfriend. Norris's That's a middle pretty name. good reason, by the way, to say, I don't want my son named after your ex-boyfriend. And no shit. Yeah. <laughs> Norris's middle name, Leo, was selected by his godmother. You ready? The same woman who eventually eloped with his natural father. <laughs> so he has some issues with that. Now, if you go to the smoking gun and you see the initial petition for his name change in Article 10 of the petition, it says the grounds of this application to change petitioner's name are as follows. Business purposes and theatrical reasons. The petitioner is involved in theatrical endeavors and has been using the new name for quite some time. Yeah, Norris just sounds cooler than Nukas. Yeah. <laughs> Anything sounds better than Can you imagine <laughs> buying no. tickets? To, not you would see King Norris, but King Nukas. King Nukas. Uh, well, I don't know. That's you know not, what? Uh, In a nuki sort of uh, apoplectic yeah, sounds... <laughs> apoplectic like, like something sort of Godzilla way. would fight. The Nukas. <laughs> Godzilla versus the Nukas. King Nukas. <laughs> What wound up happening is that, you know what, Stuttering John came into Fred's life. and You, you could almost do a whole show I on know. John versus Fred. It's, like, it's so vast and so, you know. John loves to talk about Fred, but it's basically the one story. It's basically Fred was really jealous of me when I got a recording contract, and Fred basically hadn't done dick other than, you know, his drops. Fred wound up putting a band together, whom Grillo loves inexplicably. I don't even know why. I really wanted to play this clip, which is <laughs> King Norris on Fuse from yeah. 2008. And this really, and you're almost not going to be able to listen to it, I have to confess. But the part that I really want you to listen to is at the very end. I recorded this when it was on TV, new. Oh, no, you did oh, wow. Yeah, I did. No, And really? I remember watching it. Like, first of all, I felt like this is how can this possibly be? He's promoting an album from 1993 in the year 2008 or whatever yep. that year was, 93 or 95, whatever it was. You're, I was watching it blown away because you never see old guys get a second <laughs> right. chance and go and promote an 18 year old album. Let alone on Fuse. <laughs> but I thought here the phoniest Fred should be beside himself because he has never looked out into a crowd and seen well dressed black guys dancing to his music like they like it and young women like they like it it was all set up like a trl type thing yeah yeah <laughs> and fred gets to shine and he just makes the dumbest comments oh, and dumbest it, it's comments. really and cringeworthy you know i yeah and i've said before that fred the king norris is the poor man's seven mary three <laughs> that's what you're going to hear in this performance. it's horrific okay i'm not going to play all of it <laughs> Let's just say it's three middle-aged men. I just want you guys with slight... Every, every chord sounds so derivative. Just everything sounds course. so 
forgettable, it's, it's right? Pat. It's just Pat fucking rock music. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it yep. sounds like the band that's playing at the bar just because it's Thursday night. Yep. They are yep. midlife crisis men with beer bellies. It's uh, the most yep. singularly unattractive human beings you have ever seen in your life. And they have looked... never seen a crowd like never. this and never. in any of their shows. The drummer looks like he just got out of work at the MTA with his, you know, <laughs> <laughs> in his union job. I mean, it's just... <laughs> Well, listen to Fred's voice. And pictures from Mary 3. I also want to just point out, as I was looking him up, there was a thing that said, Norris's deep, grainy singing voice is the result of extensive vocal training. <laughs> <laughs> Which complements his many improvisational <laughs> guitar <laughs> riffs. You know what? No rock band likes to hear that the guy has extensive vocal training. It takes away all authenticity. Yep. This is all yep. natural. Oh. The beauty of this song, which is Don't Talk Down yeah. to Me, is the fact that it is about how Gary came into the studio one day and said, I think one of the songs is about you, both. And yes. so we'll come back That's to really. it. This is the only rock song with the lyrics, quite frankly, in it. <laughs> <laughs> which is just what he said. Qu- quite frankly, I could give a damn anyway. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, <laughs> in other <laughs> words... <laughs> It mattered speaking. <laughs> I'm tired and I'll be <laughs> Don't mess around with me. I'll kill someone if I get a much more than this. The words are pathetically trite. I mean, wow. I, it is so horrific. And it's so funny when Ben sent this, he's like, in the text message, he's like, I can't even listen to the whole thing. Like, I can't even. Get it. <laughs> it sounds like it was made in a rock song generator. Yes, or like, or just like, like a really bad sitcom. Who's every sitcom with middle, midlife crisis has the, the, the lead character that goes into a band, mm-hmm. and it, like 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 according to Jim's Garage Band. At the end of the episode, <laughs> they play this, and all the you know all the horrible uh, you know sitcom audience sitting there clapping along with it. That's exactly. what it is, according to Jim House. Band. You guys, I have. You want to hear some? Um, I transcribed the lyrics a couple years ago. <laughs> Oh my God! You're here kidding. we go. This, this is just, I just that. only have a part of it here, and this is really going to sound like Fred. Fred was prophetic. Uh, okay, don't talk down to me. I hate your guts, and I really hate your friend. No talking down to me. Quite frankly, I could give a shit anyway. Don't mess around with me. I'm tired, and I really need some rest. Uh, don't mess around with me. I'll kill someone if I get much more depressed. Don't talk down to me, you hypocrites with your phony trophy wives. <laughs> Oh, okay, 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 oh my okay, God. okay. So that's Howard and Zoss Rapin, and I'm a yeah, gas yeah. with his wife. But that this was to. written before. Oh yeah, Howard is... had his phony trophy wife. Yeah, this is well. Yeah, it was inevitable. It was, it was inevitable. inevitable. I love it. Okay, we can't really hear this. Here we go. Here's the jam. It all sounds the same. Yeah, and. Okay, you got to listen to this reception. This is horrible. I, I have so much to talk about with this. I, when I watched it this morning, I was like, no fucking Oh, you way. watched it? Oh, yeah. I watched the whole thing. All right. I don't give a microphone to many people, Fred. You might regret this. Yeah, well, you can you, you, you can take it home. Now, just... By the way, by the way, I just want to say one thing. If my daughter is still watching, it's past your bedtime. Go to bed. Go- that, really? by the way, is the most hack thing you can say. Wow. Do that every, every award, award, every award every show. Every right? award yep. show. That is, oh, okay. Oh, so so Howard speaks at the block. She's five years old, so so she has to go to bed at Aww. seven. She, yeah, wow. there are Nazis in our house. I was gonna say, of course she walked. That's pretty See, hard. You can't, you can't let things get out of hand. There no, because if they start at five, it's just gonna keep going till fifteen. See, this is what happens. And you end up like Frank back there. So it's, uh, they all come from good families. So there you go. No, no, they don't actually. They're, no, no. These two guys are from the witness protection program. So, uh, oh, funny. It's funny that it looks like a it's, it's a it's a fuse cam, but it looks like a Sapporo from here. You know what? I That's thought fine. the same. <laughs> I have a question. Well, um, how much, wait, how much time do you think it took Fred to wear the Triumph or the Night Ranger shirt he chose to just do? <laughs> I have a question. When was Howard TV let go? 
when when it was what? How would TV let go? Uh, 13. 2013. Yeah, 2013. October, yeah. I think it was. Oh, because at least two or three of them went to Fuse. I just wonder what the connection is and why anybody would want Fred Norris on Fuse. Like, seriously, you're supposed yeah, to be the up and coming MTV, which I guess was basically for black people, I thought at the time, because didn't Puff it's- Daddy own a part of it? And so he's trying to make that the yes. black right. version of MTV. Yes. So what the fuck is Fred doing there? Like, of all people. was this like Don Buckwall going? I haven't done shit for this guy in fifteen years. Yeah, I got him something. <laughs> yes, hundred percent, hundred percent. Nice. No. Let me how, how long, let how me throw that uh, Fred guy a bone. Exactly. <laughs> well, uh, we've been playing fuck. well for about six years, but we've been together for twelve. So oh, okay. There you go. So okay. the first, okay. six, years, first, first six years were really crappy. Okay. The last six are pretty okay. good. So well, we've gotten better. At, le- at least you're honest. Now, uh, when you play gigs like this, who from how? Okay, so of course it is one hundred and ten thousand percent Howard driven, right? Because mm-hmm. yeah. Fred is nothing without Howard. As nobody in the audience knows who Fred is. No, nobody knows who no. Fred is. So we need that. They relationship. might not know who Howard is. That, well, that's true, but we need that relationship to to make this all yeah. seem like it's worthy. First Stern show actually comes by and hangs out. Who's come by the most? Right now, the record holder is Robin Ophelia Quivers. Love Maybe her. Maybe Robin Ophelia Quivers. <laughs> Love Robin. Woo! You guys think she's going to marry Jim Florentine? She says no. I've got my wow. doubts. I think she's going to. They have no idea what you're, you're talking. Allowed, about. You're allowed to come over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Howard stopped by once. The only guy who was not stopped by is Artie Lang. <laughs> Speaking of Nazis. Artie Lang does yes, what really? Artie Lang wants to do. <laughs> now, we people, all know that. People don't realize how much touring that King Norris has done over the years. You guys have played Ozfest. <laughs> you played Ozfest. It was pretty it was bad a lot of fun. Uh, uh, Ozfest, uh, excuse me, K-Rock's Dysfunctional Family Picnic. Yep, like about three or four times. Yeah, so um, what is what is the craziest tour story that you can say now that your daughter has gone to sleep? Oh, well, now, actually, oh, yeah, I don't she know if she's to gone bed. to sleep yet, so I'm going to do something that's really, oh, really no. nice. Frank, I don't know if you want to tell this story. Frank <laughs> seems to get great enjoyment out of telling the story because it's embarrassing about me, but you go ahead. Oh, then we have to hear it. Frank, let's go. Uh, we went to San Francisco for the exotic erotic ball. And, uh, um, all Howard-related shit. <laughs> ah, classic wow. Frank. Classic Frank. Okay. Yes, I know it well. We had quite a wild time, and uh, everybody got pretty crazy, and the sound was pretty bad on stage, but uh, the gates were open, so we had to go on, and Fred um, just flipped himself up on his back and landed on his back and kept playing solo. Um, and I said to him later, I said, that was fantastic. You know, what was that all about? I've never seen anything like that. He said, I was so angry that my knee locked on me and I oh. fell over. <laughs> wow. He was probably trying to really show off to the porn girls that were out in the crowd. Is, was that really that was, a, that was it, That's the best story you could tell about being on tour. That's the best you've yeah. got. Old man falling yeah, well, down. Technically, the old man's leg locks up on him. <laughs> His knee locked up. <laughs> Staying with the King Norris, um, Dennis and I found this little gem today we thought we'd play for you. I'm not sure if you've ever heard it, but here we go. All right, so now Fred took a, got a hold of my song. And he, this is all Fred, instruments yeah. and something. everything. He did it in his apartment. Yeah. Just me. All right, here he is, Fred Norris, hmm. our own mental case, Fred Norris, go. sitting in the apartment. Do you sound familiar? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fred is like a musical chameleon. Like he just, <laughs> he just, he just takes. What on genre was that? The, I know. Yeah, I know, you know, John. That's what I was wondering too. It's kind, he's kind of lost in time. Like that style of music, that Stevie yeah. Ray Vaughan type. Yeah. It's no, it's it's literally sounds like Steppenwolf. I mean, yeah, yes. I'm like like 1970. Yeah, he's trying to like throw some 90s shit at some 70s things and go, does this sound contemporary? Like what I'm doing to my voice? I I remember an argument Gary got into with Fred over music, and I, you know, I, it's hitting me now. I wish I actually got this, but I, you guys remember? And so Gary was saying Fred's music is entirely Guitar Hero. It is oh all God, predicated yes. on riffs, and it's not about the sort of substance or the lyrics. It's, it's clearly about just guitar hero. But it's you that know, same not, riff. That, did did, that, did, did riff. that not open exactly right, right. the same way that that Fuse song just did? I it did sounds, think it, it was sounds like John, doesn't yeah. John Fogarty knock off? I mean, immediately. In, <laughs> so, doesn't yeah. it just rock it in the free world? <laughs> yes, yes, it is. <laughs> 
three seconds. Keep on walking. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. I thought it was a cover at first. Yeah. Jesus, he, he he needs more. He needs fuzz on that, and it, it's the same setting on the guitar. I mean, literally, the fuzz, the delay, everything is identical. It's literally his guitar is set one way. That's how so I want to. I would change it. I want to see Emily Stern as the lead singer of King North. <laughs> we just switch. <laughs> Fred can do backup Fred vocals to blow us all away with his stupid singing. Here we are. <laughs> Oh no! Not this. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> Wait, listen to the listen to the English accent, which is ironic. Don't wanna be an American idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want a nation under the new media. I'm idiot. wincing right now. I know. I'm puckering. Hey, can you hear the sound <laughs> of the Oh my god! This is why Billy Joe Armstrong didn't do the show for twenty years. <laughs> Group he thought they were making fun of him. <laughs> this is, this you know, is... why are you mocking me? But, but, but... I remember when they did that live. I thought, Fred, you're too old to be doing that. Exactly. Song. <laughs> Just stop. Just stop. <laughs> you're out of touch. You He's know, showing it, off his vocal training, that's for sure. But those <laughs> vocal <laughs> stylings are just horrific. Like, it's so bad. Well, know. they're so inauthentic. It's really <laughs> one of the most embarrassing things about Fred is when he sings. Like, when they play, and, you know, Fred chooses those opening songs, Hotel mm-hmm. California, where he gets to show off and do his backup vocals. Oh, I, right. I hate it. Well, so he, did, he did Smells Like Teen Spirit at one of the karaoke show, and oh, Frances he? Bean killed herself. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, so so we know that the whole reason that King Norris came into being was because of his jealousy of John. So here's a clip, kind of just highlighting his uh, well, jealousy. Well, Fred's just, just a different Fred. He's he's very animated. Yeah, and oh, his voice this, is a little different. So Gary had gone to see him performing downtown or something like that. Right, right. Then there's a rap he does in the middle of a song. So will we hear songs or just raps? Well, then then um, we hear a rap in the middle of a song. Then he introduces a song that he wrote for his girlfriend, and we play that. Song. Oh, and then oh. Oh, and then I gotta a, hear that. Right. And then there's a song that we think there's there's an argument going on. We think that he wrote for you, mm-hmm. but we're not sure. Hmm. And and we'll based on the rap, it. we'll have to figure it out. Okay. G- Gary, Gary's it's obsessed with like... the word rap. Yes, you're right. He, he that he... is bummed out. Is oh, the word God, he yeah. always says the word. You can even hear it in Sour Shoes' impression of him. Yeah. Oh, that guy's rap. He's got this rap. He comes out and rap. <laughs> I'm not sure. Right. <laughs> You're not sure about anything. You're not sure who it's for. Whether. Oh, Fred, did you in fact write a song about me? Uh, no, it wasn't a song about you. It was oh. actually a song that. Uh, what? Listen, we, to you got to listen to the intro because right. evidently Fred has wow. gotten all motivated. To you'll find you'll find in this time. Fred lies as much as Howard does. Yeah, Fred, Fred is a consummate liar. Absolutely. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know what oh, Fred absolutely. also is? He's the ultimate vortex. He he started it before Benji did of the whole, like, I can't give an answer. That's I, a good point. Always you know, cagey. That's, that's Always probably cagey. why he hates Benji so much, because he sees that uh, in Benji, you know, that thing but, that he does. Really but there's one thing that's different. At least Benji's funny when he does it. That's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> or he can't be anyway, yeah. 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 Oh, you've been writing all along, but you haven't been playing it for anyone. So now you went out. I'd be sure of it. You did. He finally said, maybe I should get off my ass and do something. It did work on you because, you know, Joe, I'll tell you something. Mm, should I bring this up? <laughs> sure, go ahead. The one thing that John has said to me is that Fred has not said anything to him about his music. Of course not. Fred's having oh, a fit. That's such a lie. Fred is freaking out. That's such a lie. John. Because like, John went on. ahead and got himself an Atlantic. You know, it, for all, you know, that's great. Fred probably doesn't like John's music, uh-huh. but but... It's the kind of thing where Fred still is like, oh my God, the guy went out. At least and John he went out got and tried. A record deal. I handed it to him. Yeah, he I went really out. Do. He played at Atlantic <laughs> Records. He auditioned and he got the record contract. Fred fucking hates him, by the way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Fred yeah. absolutely oh, hates oh, him. All that validates what John's been saying for the last three years about Fred. This is like now we have the audio. I mean, this is years ago. Thanks. That's that's spot on. I find that he's one thing. You know what? I have a question. Yeah, Fred. Yeah. Had, if Stuttering John were still on the show, would you have invited him? 
No. At the, I don't, and if he was I still mean, on the show. If he was still on the I'm show, jump sure. around a little bit. Okay, so, so, so Richard should get an invite because he took John's job. That's true. He okay. should get John's invite. That's right. <laughs> what if Sal is... Rich? Oh, it sounds like you guys you are You know what? I actually jealous. wasn't. No, I wasn't yeah. jealous. I was sort of like psyched for him. Were you? Yeah. Oh, you're they went to guy. visit John out. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just in other areas. Like what? Just the fact that he gets this job where he has to go in for two hours a day and make a fortune. But I think the house is beautiful. Everybody's and jealous. I think it's great that he's got it. Right. Were you happy for him or are you just very, like, hey, fuck yeah. this guy, you know, who's no. working two hours a day? No, I, I like John. I'm very like happy John. for him. Fred, are you upset? About John? No, yeah. I'm glad he's out west. <laughs> you don't ever want to see him again. I have no feelings for John at this point in time. Right. None. Let's swing around now. Let's swing around. He's been very hard on me ever since I left. Yeah, has he, Fred? Right. Maybe it's in your best interest to not remember that. Probably yeah, me, yeah, too. Yeah, to I, tell you I mean, too. I'm not going to fucking end up with a fucking, you know, John. fucking AK-47 and fucking taking me out. The fucking <laughs> oh, lunatic. He, <laughs> that's a lunatic. He was he's, really he's eight high. I think he's was, eight thrones uh, deep. You know was what? It, was it a loyalty thing? No, I, no, because he had his... Listen, I know... Listen, listen. He, there were times where he wanted to leave. Right. I know that as a fact. Sure. And I know that from a very... Good thought. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, he had, his, he had his song, his album, Don't Talk Down to Me, which, uh, you know, I'm not going to say what it's, I mean, uh, I'm not going to make it because I don't want to get sued. Right. But, but I can only assume who he was talking about. And I know that I, I don't think he was very happy in a lot of ways, too, for being whatever. And I think I... You mean because you got the Tonight Show gig you're talking about? I think he was... Well, first I got the record deal. Right. And Fred was a musician. That was huge. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, that was something that, you know, was like, wow. Because I'm very ambitious. I'm sorry. I am. Yeah, I'm yeah. an ambitious guy. You know, so, and, 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 and I did, I think. And he always wanted to be a musician. Because then he started King Norris. And I, and I could be wrong, but I think he said that I was I was part of the reason why he started playing music again. So uh -huh. like, this fucking See, full circle now, my friends. Full circle. And then, you know, I would have killed for a record deal, but that, yeah, that, but that then, wouldn't get get me mad at somebody who got no, one. But then, well, if well, anything, that would be good for the other guys. Right, right. No, no, no. And then, and, then, and, and then Fred was always did like the voiceover work, trying to get the... Trying to get the and then fucking... A stutter against the announcing gets game. The fucking the announcing <laughs> game. I mean, you know, Ooh, it was yeah. a little like, hey, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, there have to be a good amount of people. I, I think the Fred, and not many people with the Fred. You know, like, you know. No, you know what the truth is? Turn spotlight, whatever, like the, mm -hmm. like my tribute thing. So did you I, jump around a little bit, you know, so I did it and, Yeah, and, I, I and skipped ahead because like, it was not worth. I, 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 I wasn't the, around for that. Oh, uh, uh, J Benz. Uh, oh, right. You know, took a shot at me. Thankfully, you know, Gary's teeth got in the way, and I wouldn't. Didn't, <laughs> but but like there we were, and I. So full circle with John. He, he he tied that into Fred. It was weird. I didn't think he was gonna. I, I, you can you can stop it if you want. But he goes. To, I wouldn't have put that for no reason. He ties that into Fred with Benza. But okay. He he said, want. you know, they said John Howard and Tom said, "What do you want to do?" And I go, "You know what? I got to." I swear to God, I said this. I got to deflect to the most normal man in the room. Let's see what Fred has to say about oh, this. Oh, shit. I swear. And I'm listening. I go, what the fuck was wrong with me? <laughs> oh, you weren't, oh, you weren't goofing? No. No, oh, gee. I thought no, but the truth was, I always felt that Fred... He was like, uh, he would make the right decision on something like that. Really? He's yeah, a level-headed guy. I did, I did. And it was because, I mean. So was Frankenstein. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because AJ took a shot at me, and you know. Oh. So, so anyway. so I'll get that taken care of. I just said, you know, let's see what Fred says. And Fred had the, you know, he whatever. He, now. Okay. So here's the thing. And I guess maybe this ties into Fred walking out because we have a couple of clips of Fred. This was Fred walking out because he was tired. What is it, Gary? What are you doing here? Well, Fred left, so... He I actually left, left the he building. Left, so I he really... left the building? Yeah, he left. They yeah. saw him get in the he elevator. Took the elevator out with him. He had his jacket in his bag, and he's gone. Yeah, well, he, 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 so thinks, he thinks No, he doesn't take it serious. He thinks he's being funny. But I am not playing any more commercials. <laughs> well, luckily, if he, what? luckily, there's no more left to play. Oh, no, that's not true. I, I asked him if he's going back tomorrow. He said he didn't know. He didn't know, really? Yeah. yeah he's oh, full of it. He's, he'll be right back. What is wrong with him? He had him? his bag, and he was walking home. <laughs> Well, hey, that's his decision. It's too bad. I really like working with the guy, but <laughs> I guess I'll have to find someone else. Call Cronin up. Tell him he has a job. Oh, my God. Mark goodness. Cronin. Wow. He's <laughs> wow. That's... He, he was laughing on the way down, too. He was uh, laughing? Yeah. And this is Fred's joke. Yeah, this is Fred's joke. Oh, right? Except it's I not funny you. that he's not coming back. I, I, I said to funny him... Funny that I, he left. I said to him, I said... I said uh, it would have been funny if he left for a minute. And I said, back. are you... Um, are you no, this is a joke, right? You, you you have to leave early today. He goes, no. He told me to go, so I left. Twelve years, finally, he wrote a joke. <laughs>
going forward, Fred walked out and left his bag there. And so then they decided to start mm-hmm. rifling through his bag. Why, uh, why should I call him? I didn't walk out. Well, I think Tom thinks we're playing these spots. Oh, I'm not playing any spots. That's Fred's job. <laughs> Everybody's revolting. Fred will cost the company about, um, I'd say about, probably about 20 grand right there in that one break. God, you got to figure it out. <laughs> Look at this. Tom's Hi, Tom. already counted Go ahead, up. Man. You count up how much money you're losing, right? Because of Fred. <laughs> That's why Gary's here. Gary can run the board great. Ah. 1500 500 That's 2000 2500 uh, three thousand, thirty-five hundred. I'm gonna say about five to five to seven thousand. You're you're a little low on the live commercial. Uh, so. Yeah, I might be right. Yeah, I might be yeah. right. I say he's gonna cost the company minimum ten grand. Then we go to the next day where we have the aftermath of Fred walkout number one. <laughs> As you know, Fred, um, we were in the middle of a commercial. Yes. And whenever I do the Iowa Mini System commercial, Fred yells out, "Mini, Mini System." Okay. You know he always does that. Yeah. So it was getting on my nerves, and I said, "Fred." Don't do it anymore. Don't yell out mini system. It's hard enough to get through these commercials. So uh, he says, oh, yeah, well, I'm just doing it because I'm tired. Well, Which I was, was trying to make a joke. Right. You were making a joke about trying. Robin stormed off the show because she was tired. Right. She goes, I'm tired. <laughs> so that was pretty funny. And Fred saying I'm tired was funny. Right. And, and so, so somebody thought. said, well, if you're so tired, I said it. I said, leave. I said, if you're so tired, why don't you leave? So Fred goes, OK, he picks up his bag and he walks out. Howard uses this against him going forward because mm-hmm. this insolence shall not go unpunished. So anyway, Fred did a dollar date. I don't even know the work up to the dollar date. Somebody they were. Can... Well, if I remember correctly, I remember this is. How long ago? 30, 32 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It was a whole thing about getting Fred a date because remember, this, up to this point, they were just harassing that Fred doesn't have a girlfriend. Fred doesn't go out with anyone. I remember the rap would be um, he would hang out with he, he would hang out with Gary, right, at Gary's yeah. house with Gary's parents. And so they set up a dial a date, and she's just a listener of the show, which is always so comical when Howard rips on Imus for marrying a listener. Oh, 100 percent. Allison, <laughs> Allison is the tanko of the 1980s. Absolutely. She won because, well, she, she was won. the only one that seemed almost normal between. I remember the other two were were pretty bad. Pretty obvious that she was going to be the one. Uh, then, has she heard this live? Yeah, I heard this live. Oh, uh, okay. Long time ago, though. Fred's a funny guy because he just doesn't tell you anything, you know? That night, Fred was yeah. there. And he, I guess he was, you know, ha- had a couple of drinks and stuff. Right. And usually a guy says, hey, you know, I might be on to something because Fred was supposed to stay at my apartment. Yeah, right. And I kept saying to Fred, I, like, wanted to go. And Fred kept, like, waving me off. Right. You know, I said, Fred, well, come on, you want to go? You, if you want to stay, stay. And he's like, well, let's give me a couple more minutes. That's yeah, what it was. He's working a the room. A couple more minutes, a couple more minutes. Right. And finally, like, midnight, I couldn't take it anymore because I had to go to sleep. <laughs> and Fred, of course, was talking like a mental patient. But I said to Fred, I said, Fred, I'm going home. I said, uh, I'm waiting up till 1 o'clock. If you're not there by 1 o'clock, oh. I'm going to sleep because I had to let him in. You know, right. I have an extra set of keys, and Fred never showed up. Right. And let you stay up till 1. <laughs> yeah, the mystery man. <laughs> Did you know you were going to score? No, I didn't. No, he was in the middle no, of figuring actually, it out. Actually, I was actually uh, on the way to saying goodnight to her, and I told the cab to wait. And we went inside, and he left. Oh, Ooh. that's why you had to the stay. The cab driver. Oh. <laughs> so I said, well, let's just hang but out. why did he leave? While. Because we were probably taking a little too long. <laughs> Boy, you were really in love there. The first time. Was it love at first sight? Uh, yeah. Really? Was, yeah. For her, no. <laughs> well, I can understand that. <laughs> So what happened? You got her back to the apartment. She like took your pants off and stuff and started uh, doing you. No, it was just basically uh, wow. how far can you go on? What a tramp! What a slut your wife is. <laughs> just God kidding. Wow. She actually isn't. I don't think she's ever done that with anyone before. No, she hasn't. <laughs> cab driver. Not since Fred, anyway. God don't want her yet. She got more friends than things. <laughs> But she was pretty lit, so... Wait a minute. You were saying the other day that you think some of the wives are cheating. Who's cheating? Don't want to say. Why not? Don't want to talk you about talk it. talk about all the Don't guys. Hey, man. He's 40 years he's, old. He's 40. How, how old is Allison uh, compared to Fred? I believe she's in her 20s. Yeah. I'm looking over the summary of the dial date and uh, yeah. f- Howard did not want Fred to pick Allison as the winner. Really? He thought either of the other two women were a better choice. Exactly. Allison. That's why it was so obvious that Allison was the best choice. Uh... <laughs> 
Fred is having real issues with his relationship with Allison. She wants to be an actress, is in Tony and Tina's wedding, which was basically, you know, any up and coming actor's version of playing Dead Body Number Two on CSI back in the day. Mm-hmm. Like everybody was on back like, in Tony and Tina's wedding. Pretty much half the Stern crew was on. Including Tony Stuttering John, yeah. Fred was getting increasingly upset over the fact that Allison had to make believe she was passionately making out with some guy who is part of the cast. And Fred couldn't understand that this was part of her role as an actress. Like, he just didn't get that, which I thought was kind of weird. I want to tell you something, Brian. I think it would be very difficult for you to go see this. Well, because I, this will be the test right here. All right, let's take a look but at it. But you know, and the Howard, other thing is thing? I want to point out to Fred, if the guy thinks she's so attractive, he's really enjoying himself. Oh, yeah? Oh. Mm-hmm. oh it yeah. doesn't Fred, matter what she's doing. He's you, enjoying himself. Have you soul-kissed your wife since uh, she's been in the play? No. Soul-kissed. Just wow. <laughs> soul-kissed? I just want to throw that out there. This is soul Oh, no, I have not. <laughs> really? Really? I have not soul I applaud that. I have not. I applaud you. And if I see this and I don't like uh, what I see, I'm going to have to reevaluate certain situations. And let me tell you something. I, think I don't blame you. He's pretending. Oh, I don't think so. Hey, I'm not say one thing. Fred don't pretend. <laughs> no, my wife is very nervous about this. Yeah, Howard. You have no idea. Yeah. Allison was very nervous. And she, and no she should idea. be. Maybe Allison found out phone. after this incident. Yeah. Like after the play, she found out that the e camera was taping her. Right. She, was very, um, she was very upset. Very upset. Good. Get her on the phone. I so want to talk to her. She didn't know at the time. No, she didn't know. I knew something was up because I came Get Fred's wife on the phone. I woke up this morning. In front of my coffee machine, there was a rose and a little note. A Honey, rose. I love you. Ooh. Oh, this is bad. Ooh, We've had two conflicting reports. Not good. Yeah. Fred wow. winds up going to see Allison in said play. What happened was Howard, you know, is just egging him on. He has Allison in with the guy who she stars with who kissed her on at the show. First, he recreates the kiss and basically is humping her fucking leg, Howard, Mm -hmm. and then wants Stuttering John to do it, and Fred just loses his shit. Matt, because nobody ends up kissing me anyway. Hey, let me see you do it. Don't kiss me so much. Go ahead, Listen to that Brooklyn accent of hers. (laughs) Love it. I love it. That's crazy. He'll be all right. He'll be all right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let me see you. Howard, I'm telling you, I will not. Why not, John? I will not be all right. Why would you let Patrick do it and we only John? No means no. Oh, <laughs> no, no means yes. I'd go Is do it anyway. Is there anybody in the room else who can? I wouldn't listen to you. you I'd can. go do you it. You can, Robin. <laughs> it was worth it. I'm not in Robin. the room. I'm not in the room. Well, we can get in John, do the scene. Howard, are you nuts? I'll do it. <laughs> I, I mean, did it. Look at him. You want to know something? You want to let him do it? Then, then I'm going to leave. Oh. Do you have to leave the room or are you no, going to leave the show? I will leave the show. Hold on. You're for quitting? good? You're for quitting? Bro, for good. Come on. No, wait a second. Don't make that offer. Hold on. Hold on. Now want. we know how to get it. That's, that's what you want. That's what you want. Are you that's serious? Fine. You would leave I the will, show? I will. He's such a fucking baby. Jesus Christ. Wow. He's ridiculous. I have all of these in the Fred Walks Out section of things because <laughs> there's, there's still another one to come after not this one. Then they'll fire your wife. Then you will be out of work. There you go. What, you, what Johnny? Uh, this is Ben. Oh, ben. Uh, go ahead, John. No, go ahead, Ben. Go ahead. You're in the middle. I was say, uh, Fred ha- passionately hates John. So I understand why it's driving him nuts that his boss is saying, go ahead, kiss his wife. Or, yep. At that point, was it girlfriend at that point or wife? I, wife. I forget. Wife. Wife. Yeah, I can understand why Fred is like crawling out of his skin because he's getting the screws tightened and tightened and Howard goes to what would hurt him the most. And I just also wanted to say as an aside, this was such a it was such an amazing time for the E oh my cameras oh my to yes. be in on I mean you know, any a couple years earlier or a couple of years later, if E had started, this would not have been the same thing. But no. God, what a time this was. Uh, I uh you that I could dub, I could just kind of hand me the uh, baton on that. I was about to say something in the same thing. I had a girlfriend at the time. And full disclosure, so we watched, I got her into Howard, so we were watching the E! show a lot. It was a, pretty much a nice ritual. That came on, and she got really choked up the way they shot this, because what they did, they had Fred kind of mope out of the studio onto the street. Do you remember this? And they showed his yes. silhouette from behind, and I guess the E! channel played like, almost, it was almost like the the end of like the, the old Hulk series with uh, <laughs> with <Rick Carson. laughs> It was that kind of music. And it kind of tugged at you a little bit. And you just saw Fred sort of wandering into Midtown Such as he supposedly left the show. She actually pussy. got like affected by it. 
He's a pussy. He's a pussy and a baby, yeah. and he can't he can't handle confrontation at all. You know what, too, Monique? All these guys, girlfriends and spouses, are the lowest level of barnacle showbiz frame whores, and they latch on to these guys in the hopes, I think, underneath it all, what's next, and who else is it, and what could this lead to, and I'll use Fred for this, and maybe this play will... I mean, that's deep in the recesses of their aspirations, that this bullshit's going to actually lead to something else. And she would drop Fred like a... CBS sitcom if somebody came along. You know, and in, the, in the larger picture of this, Howard really was implying that Fred's wife is a prostitute available mm-hmm. to anyone. Absolutely. He was saying, Gary, come yeah. in here. You do it. Jackie, you do it. Yeah. He yep. was trying to make everyone grope and fondle Fred's wife yeah. right in front of Pour Fred. Pour her out. Pour her out for Fred. Yeah. Right. Well, Horrible. Well, yeah, but you know, the other thing is, what was 89 implying about the wives cheating? Who was he? Was he implying about Fred's that, wife? That's but Howard, Howard groped her too, Dennis. And Fred I know, but I'm thinking in the previous did. in the previous clip, he implied that some wives were cheating, and then you know he's been beating on Fred this entire time, and this is like the culmination of all that. So was he implying that Fred's wife was cheating? I, I will say that I recently read an article, People Magazine article on Howard back in '84, and even then he was saying everybody who's in management. Half of them are cheating on their wives at yep. WNBC. So he's been doing this people are cheating thing yep. and putting it out Forever. there. For, he's been doing it for 10 years at that point. He loves cheating on wives and ex-wives, and oh, it's a whole yeah. part of his narrative all the time. Well, it's yeah. a guilty conscience, I guess that's why. Except it's done to him. Yeah, let's play the rest. What are you going to do then? <laughs> well, do you want to watch Tony and Fred, suppose I play Dominic in the play. Then would you leave this, this show? Because if, I'm in, if I had to do it in the play? Would they let you play that role? Yeah. Then do it. Yeah. Then do it. And then would you leave this show? I would not let my this wife is, do it. This is irrational. He would not let out. You're going to stop your wife from acting night? with John. There's something I would about not me, let Howard. No. You have nothing to say about it. You don't stop her. You. T- I don't know what I've. I don't know what I've did to you, Freddie. I Johnny, really. You've do done not nothing know. to me. Well, then, I don't understand something. the reaction though. That, yeah, there, there is something, and I think we should. You know. You know. John, I don't have therapy. to explain myself to you. <laughs> I th- well, <laughs> you see what you're doing to the guy? You don't after that. You don't. I don't. Allison, no, you see what you're doing to the guy? Jeez. This is what you're doing to him. You're torturing him. It's a of This is what I'm trying to tell you. What, so you can kiss a guy every night on stage? Go get a real acting job. Go out and find a role where you don't go on as, as someone from the Howard Stern show. That's what all I'm saying. This is not right to do to Fred. The guy is tortured. Like, like flirting if you really do love him, you'd stop this nonsense. <laughs> Enough with this kissing. <laughs> Enough That's kiss. all I'm going to say about it. He really does deep down inside sound like his mother. He is his mother's yeah. child. Oh, he is his mother. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Right, but even that is mind games that he's doing right now yeah, with Fred. Yeah, of course, of course. I you, know what it is with Fred, you know what it is with Fred, too? He's got, like, Neutrogena skin. He gets the attention, and he gets this ribbing about one-thirtieth amongst anybody else compared to the other guys. So he just can never develop a thick skin because he just doesn't get it enough. Every time this happens, he goes nuts. You, ne- you know what I mean? You never, ever develop a Robin thicker skin too. because you're not really in the crosshairs that often. Robin, too. Robin, when Robin she gets too. in the crosshairs, right, exactly. she laughs exactly. or she walks out. And so she she's not good with confrontation well, at Howard all. Too. Howard, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, Howard, too. Well, Howard is the skin of them all. They yep. are. They're the worst. Clean it up again. <laughs> now right. that you matter, you tell her to quit. I'd like to rehearse with you again. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to go into rehearsal. <laughs> John and Dennis, how do you guys? How would you guys handle this? You're in Fred's situation. Your wife, you That's hate stuttering John, and your longtime friend and boss here is pressuring your wife and and and, and your coworker who you hate. To make out right in front of you. I mean, that's that's a great question. It's no, I know. Cuck, I know. You gotta, it's you a gotta, cuck moment yeah. that is awful. Yeah, I, I would. I would hope, having worked on the show for twenty years at that point, that I would have been like, okay, do you a know landscape here? A little above. Yeah, maybe you had some kind of. You would hope. You know what you would do is you skin. would. What you would do is you would pray. That your wife would say, I refuse. But she didn't say that. No. no. You would pray that your wife would do that, and she didn't. Let's do two no. steps. Let's do two steps back from that, okay? Your wife, who who the fuck knows what she was doing before she decided she was going to be an actress, right? So she gets this role in this show. So you have to know to some extent that if she's going to be an actress, she's gonna to have to do certain things. The fact that she then came in to talk about how upset Fred was is really fucked up on her part. That's, the, that's not kind of what I'm getting well, at. Right. The fact I, that Allison I, even I, did this, I think, is really wrong. But they want that publicity. I mean, that's why they're the show sycophants that they are. The thing is, I think at this point, there was a little bit of 
animosity between Fred and Allison because they had been they known what seven years. Fred's never had a serious relationship in his entire That's life. Right. right. That's right. And I imagine that it was pro- getting probably pretty miserable for her. So this is her way of striking back at him because the one thing that he fucking cannot handle. There's a lot of fuck you in her actions yes. during this time. I mean, it's massive. Do you think that Fred would have accepted a role where he got to make out with a woman every single night? I don't think no. he would have. No, absolutely not. He, yeah, out of no. out of a being a gentleman kind of a thing. Full intentions, but yeah. he makes it out with Ryan Felipe. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just throw this out, though. People who have never had girlfriends before and then their one serious girlfriend is the one they marry, especially when they're older, I feel like they kind of regress to being like 15 or 16-year-olds where mm-hmm. they have a level of immaturity about their relationship. Or not that they regress. Oh, they just I, never I, matured past. I, I, right. I will totally – Monique, you are spot on. I will totally cop to that. I remember – in the earliest, my early 20s, having been such a rube to the dating, having a girlfriend at that point, and you'd go out all the time. We'd go to places that were sort of club ass, mostly bars, but some places were like a hybrid. And they'd be like some Jason Momoa type, because I'm like, oh, dude, can I cut in? And you try to not <laughs> act jealous. And you sort of let it go, but it bothers you, you know, and you're sitting yeah. there and you're eyeing it. And if you don't, if you're not some serial dater and you're not, you know, I am not going to lie. It, it, you definitely sit there and that cuckold thing, you're not going to let it happen. I, 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 I agree with it. But the problem is that Fred is in his 40s when this exactly. is happening. Exactly. So he- <laughs> well, not only that, but it's amplified by being filmed and right. being, yeah. you know, the, he's being surrounded because. They sense weakness, so they're pouncing. And oh, absolutely. It, it is definitely a little bit of arrested development just in terms of his um, mm-hmm. emotional maturity in a relationship as well. Because definitely. A, why would you let your wife be an actress knowing fully well that there may or may be a situation where this would happen? You yeah. know? Well, well I don't think per- Fred was, in a, was, it, was it gonna not let her do what she wanted to do. Right, I agree. But he would yeah. pray that she wouldn't do this to him. But it's got to be in, part in of a the role. In a different lifetime, he would have been the guy who married his high school sweetheart. Yes. And that that's a wrap. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly right. Right. It so just now, requires having had a high school sweetheart. Sweetheart, yeah. 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 You know. So this is all escalating now, right? So he's really upset with Allison. He's upset with what's going on on the show. And then it culminates in that fabulous Rainbow Room fight. And there's a great <laughs> picture of them at the Rainbow Room. I don't know if any of you have seen it. It's phenomenal. Yeah, I have. I just wanted to ask, do you think – that this is Howard just angry that Fred has a life without him, that he's that he's kind of moved on. He's got Allison now and yeah. he just wants to see him lose that. I think there's always bitterness involved with all these guys. No. Fred is easily triggered. That's all I can exactly. Say. You know, no, but Monique. well, Howard is only doing this because of the joy it brings Howard. Yeah, of exactly. Schadenfreude. Don't you think that there's something to like, look, you moved on, you know, yes. you, you have your own life now. And I hate that. And you yeah. wouldn't have that. You no. wouldn't have that life if it wasn't. That's no. always the way he operates. Yeah, that's, that's, always, that's, that's always the way. Always the way he, that's, it always goes to that. Emotion. I, I don't see him having any jealousy that no. Fred has a, a, a quasi life because he, really well, he, oh, he yeah. wants everybody's life. He, he's jealous of everybody's money, everybody's life. No matter. He wants. His might be better, but in that moment, he can't. Uh, we have a, we have a clip for of, anybody. We, we have a clip of him saying, that, "If it that. wasn't for me, you, Fred would have nothing." Let me get to the Rainbow Room fight. Well, Monique, can I ask you one question? Can you explain to the non-tri-staters the Rainbow Room? And because I used to not even know, absolutely, what is it? What's the deal so, with that? Okay, it's what a is- it's a stunning room on the top of the NBC building. It's oh, really? very very. I mean- Art Deco. It's absolutely one of the most gorgeous rooms you can possibly ever go to. So a guy called in and said he saw Fred and Jackie and their wives at Rainbow Room and that Fred, I guess this guy was sitting below Fred and Jackie and harkened back to the fact that they had this huge fight and that he slammed down and broke a glass and then he walked out. And then the best part about it was the fact that Allison stayed for the whole rest of the dinner. She was like, fuck him. <laughs> she, she didn't even That's walk out so with him. so telling. So telling, oh, right? Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, of course, you know, Howard starts in with him and starts, you know, digging deep into the whole thing. And ha- and Fred, once again, you know, is quitting the show if you keep going through this uh, conversation. <laughs> no. no, no this I'm just trying to no, say no, that you're married. This has gone way too far. What? The guy called up and said you had a fight with your wife. I don't care. 
You're, if you're supposed to be a friend, you're supposed to like you know like know where to draw the line. I don't know where to. You don't know where to draw the line. You were a friend. Then I don't. You were a friend. You would understand that I don't know how to draw the line. Well, then you want to know something. Right. You should learn how. Right. So I can learn how. how. Oh, so so you're gonna. I can learn how in my own life. I'm gonna learn in your life. Maybe you try to get a job at the Rainbow Room. Yeah. Why don't you just shut up and die? Oh. Hey, just because you fight with Fred, you don't have to displace it and put it on this guy. Yeah, yeah, shoot the messenger. Yeah, shoot the messenger. Yeah, shoot the messenger. I don't even know why the hell you're there to begin with. I'm just picturing wow. Fred if he hadn't given up the Earth Dog character, and he still had to be doing that. And they're like, this is my last day then. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't kissing my wife. Yeah, keep it garbage, you know that? Hey, Jackie? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think she's telling me a Jackie. I'm not now. Allison, what, what happened? So go ahead. We were interrupting you. Jackie I'm sorry. Jackie Nancy are wonderful people. Please uh, spoil their anniversary. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, Jackie's anniversary. Oh, it was their anniversary, yeah. Shut up. Freddie, you admit you spoiled their anniversary. I admit that. Okay, thank and you. And this guy is trying to wow. ruin my life, and I'm not going to let you. You know something? Hey, Freddie, he's not ruining your life. You know why? Because you're leaving Fred? <laughs> you know, that could almost be Ronnie's girlfriend talking. I'm just throwing You're obsessed with Long Island. Yeah. You're excited that. You love those accents. <laughs> but this was the era I started listening in, 94 is when I started listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's such a fascinating era. So much mm -hmm. interesting stuff. I mean, it's really cruel. But look how it's so real. I mean, Allison is really upset about this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. When Dennis and I were looking through this guy's archives of 94, 95, 96, we were like, we should do a show on 1995 alone because so yeah. much stuff happened that year. Selena and the fights. Yep. I mean, just the book was coming out, the new one. The book. I mean, and Robin's yeah. book, too. Robin's book. You see, Ben, that's why the show will never end. We'll never do the Monique Calamari show because we can do 1995. <laughs> This guy is dead to you? I don't care. Are you two insane? This guy's a slug. All right, what happened, Allison? Sorry, you didn't have a chance to respond. I'm not telling you what happened, Howard. Right. Sorry. Oh, but you said you wanted to say something, and I interrupted you. The only thing I wanted to say was, Fred, don't, don't, you know, don't even go there because it's not worth it. Oh, Fred can't go there. No, I'm You upset him. You upset my friend. going anywhere. To the point that, excuse me, I'm allowed. I feel like Howard really dislikes Allison. Just throwing it out. There. Oh, he hates her. Like he oh, has this a, visceral woman, like, right? hate for her. <laughs> yeah, does. but I also Howard does that thing where he suddenly is righteous and on your yeah. side. Right. Yeah, but just to continue playing off. mental games with you. Even yeah. though, as we I mean, know, he's been literally digging at him for like weeks now. Yes. Yeah. yeah all of this is this is the culmination of it. No, you upset no, my no, friend no. to the point. I'm turning off your microphone. Well, you want to I upset you. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how to answer right. them either, obviously. Like, I see your problem, Allison. There's no point in being here, right. okay? Right. Because I'm not going to have you explain Freddy, this point. I see. Freddy, just chill out. Don't yeah. worry. He's, I mean, he's already exploited our life. What is that? Do? Is that how? You know, I exploit your life. Excuse me. He gave you. Oh, like he's not. I gave you a life, sweetheart. I put you on dial a date and got you a man. He gave me a life. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot that you gave birth to me. <laughs> I didn't give birth to you, but I know I gave life to you. Life for everything. I gave you. I gave Fred a life, and I gave you a life. You take Easy shot, eh? Wow. me too, right? I, just about. I might as well. The world spin. Everybody well. needs lactate nourishment. That's right. <laughs> uh, Robin, Poppy, and Mommy. <laughs> so what happened? Oh. Tell me what you were about to say. Did you call him Mammy? Talk to your Mommy. Talk oh, I just said Mammy. That's she worse. sounds like uh, the female bagel boss. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to button this up really quickly by reading something that I also found online about Fred. When Norris announced on the show that Allison had become pregnant by means other than sexual intercourse, fellow what? Stern... Oh, I didn't know they did that. Yeah. Fellow Ooh. Stern staffer Robin Quivers stated that she knew that she knew if Fred was going to have a child, it would have, quote, have to be a science project. After a pause... Whoa. Norris called Robin a fat, malicious cow. Wow. Oh, wow. Fat, malicious cow. I would kill to have that. I, we need yeah. to find that. 
Well, if you remember when John was going to have his kid, Howard said Howard's advice was abort it. Abort it. Well, yeah, first, and it first was, of us, don't get married. It, was, it wasn't, it wasn't it was not ironic either. No, it was not a go. These people hate children, and they especially hate seeing people close to them enjoy having children. Anybody who was getting married was don't get married either. I mean, he hates yeah. the whole the whole relationship thing. thing is, though, here, here's the bizarro part, though. Um, the birth of, of Fred's daughter, okay, so it was artificial insemination. Why? I mean, so he's, Mar- he's a Martian. Then. <laughs> <laughs> That's how Martian I mean, Banner that and, is. And, and, and I mean, he was he was fairly old when she was she. How old is she now? Fourteen, fifteen? How yes. how old is Tess? Oh, I think she's seventeen. Or oh, oh, yeah, she's seventeen. She's seventeen. Holy shit! So here he is, he's almost fifty years old, and he's having a kid. And I'm I'm guessing this is to keep together, kid. Because You're it right. seems just really weird that they suddenly have a child. Well, and in if it's artificial insemination, then yes, of well, course. Yeah. P- so, people are having kids later now. I mean, like, don't you just picture him at one of these, like, Manhattan parks and all the fathers are, like, 32, and here comes 64 year old Fred sidling up next to him. <laughs> <laughs> it's the guy from Fuse TV. <laughs> <laughs> Probably just a very honest mistake. One of the kids, guys, can, hey, so you're the grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> so you're the grandmother. <laughs> grandmother. <laughs> grandmother. I, I think I think Peter Parker quit the Daily Bugle less than Fred quit the Howard right? Stern show. It's constantly what. How out. many times is this now? Ten. This kind of goes back to Fred's overhyped intelligence mm-hmm. because when it really comes down to it, he's not able to ne- negotiate. He just has to go, I forfeit, and walk away. He never gets involved with the battle of wits. He will instead resort to, like, imitating the person and babbling their words back to them like a kid. And and I don't want to say the B word, but he's in the Buckwald camp. And you got to maintain that order. Howard knows he's not going anywhere. No, he's not going anywhere. We have a classic thing we say in my family when you're like that. It's called a board flipper. It's like you're mm, right in the middle of a fucking Monopoly game Mm, and somebody else is winning. (laughs) They I land on Park the Place, place. <laughs> and, oh, I love and, that. I love and that. the fucking person Wait. just takes the board and uh, just says, fuck it, you're not playing anymore. Hey, Fred's wit, I mean, he basically he's coming unarmed. You can't have a battle with somebody who doesn't have any. No, but I mean, that's, yeah. that's the point. He loses to an 89. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't have – He it isn't because of the the pecking order. He just doesn't have the intelligence. He couldn't even beat Stuttering John in any of the Wait, arguments. Whoa, 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 Dennis, 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 I got to disagree. Fred's, there you go. Is <laughs> Don Rickles could not talk that at the Flyers Club <laughs> or in the Catskills. <laughs> Fred said something in this clip that always annoys me that he says, which is, uh, "You want to know something?" Why he always says that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, a lot of people hate his "huh" that he yeah. does uh-huh. when oh, someone fake, will fake surprise. Yeah, fake. I don't understand. It's, uh, it's, it's when, his when... version. It's his version of Robin's "what." Exactly. Oh, it's always for when, uh, you know, basically Howard's under attack by a caller, by a staff or whatever. So that's how they respond to it. By basically, you, you don't make any sense. I, I'm not sure the, the cursing at Siri has benefited anybody more than maybe Fred. It well, especially comes, cl- comes through in the history of Howard Stern when he's giving his stories. It's always just he, he's, you know, he worked in a machine shop before going Right into radio, and he sounds All like right. a guy who works in a machine yes. shop. <laughs> yeah. fat, fat. He is a he is just a big dumb guy who read an encyclopedia and retained Which, nothing uh, from uh, it. Really, no, obviously not. not. Well, let's well, go. Gonna... Let's go to win Fred's money, shall we? Because yeah. John put together some phenomenal clips, and it, this this actually ties into Mean Fred. Here's Fred doing win Fred's money, right? So everybody's like, "Look at what a genius Fred is." You know, there's a really big part of me that believes that most of this was set up because I you'll just... hear it in this more than any. As of late, we've really seen how the show sets up these contests and they're not fair there's no disclaimers there's no anything saying that they're actually a fair contest right that it actually is a real contest absolutely and we've heard from insiders revealing that yeah. if fred was truly as smart as we're led to believe he is he would have no problem taking the iq test right so let's listen to so who is julie bowen bowen is an and my new favorite actress by the way she stars on modern family and which is actually a really good show it's one of the few network shows i really enjoy I truly oh, like that show. Mom? She's the blonde mom. She's Ed O'Neill's daughter on there. So why is she on Winfred's Money? On the time, she was on a show called Ed with uh, Shazam starting it. And so that was what she was promoting. And she it was a celebrity edition of Win Ben Stein's Money. And she took on Fred. 
Right, which Howard basically knocked off from Win Ben Stein's money. Which so, is completely plagiarized from Win Ben Stein. Of course. Right. Was she supposed to be marked as smart? She, she went to uh, an Ivy League school. Harvard uh, uh, Sh- Brown. Brown, right, right. I right. only know and, that because uh, I hear mention of Jonathan. And she's sharp. She shows you knowledge and she improvises. She thinks on her feet. She knows stuff. She's a passionate, stern super fan at the time. And she comes in to, to challenge Fred to this. Everything makes me, this is making me nervous. It is. All right. I have seven questions. Fred, get into the isolation booth. Let's let Julie Bowen. This is a $10,000 prize from Winfred's money. is provided by Bally's Total Fitness. Fred has music on in the booth. He cannot hear a thing. I assure you of okay, that. I'm going to give you seven right questions, Julie. You remember that okay, when they would show it and Fred would be like bopping around yeah. to the music? Right, yeah. right, right. Bopping. Like he's incapable of not moving around when he hears music? We're not listening to the questions, and I just no, no, I, 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 I skip over. I skip. I go to. Oh, I go to. I was going to answer there's them. A, there's, there's, I, I showed you like one or two questions just to give you a sample of how the thing goes. It's very quick, but the key to that is. I needed to show you that Fred walked in on her getting read the answers from Howard after she was done. So, and Howard gets <laughs> oh, Howard gets rattled shit. by Howard gets rattled by this because you're not supposed to know. It, the jig is up. Fred's pretending he no, and obviously they have pumping this through K Rock. If anybody listened to the certain, the people in the back office hear the show as it's happening. So Fred's listening to her get the answers read back to her from Howard, and comes in on accident, I guess, in the middle of this. And Howard's like, "Whoa, whoa, what are you doing, Fred? What are you getting at?" So right in the middle of like and, the last. This is a end. perfect example of mean Fred. I have two other ones that are phenomenal as well. So here, here we go. Eflin? Which former KGB agent succeeded Boris Yeltsin as president of Russia? Uh, oh, Jesus, pass. Oh, Attribute. Oh, oh, screw me. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, three right. Oh, dear. In one minute, don't say a word yet. What? Oh, oh, Fred. Fred, Fred going back in the room. Up. I didn't want him in here. No, no, no. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess usually you... Uh... Let me just go over this with you. Yeah. I didn't know that. I'm, this is, I'm like one of those girls. <laughs> I'm the idiot girl all of a sudden. No, you're not an idiot. You got three right. Yeah. Go to, I, I let's go to Fred. I feel a little cheated. I didn't know we did this. Oh, don't say anything. Don't say anything. Here comes Fred. You're a Brown University graduate. You got over 1,400 in your SATs. Fred just went to community college. Uh, Western Connecticut State University. Okay. And a correction on Brown. It's not so great. JFK Jr. went there. Right. Okay. Whoa, 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 come on. Whoa. You don't know what a brain surgeon wow. he was. Anyhow, you know, Fred. They, they, Wow. What an asshole. I, I love JFK Jr., by the way. Paid his way in. Here we go. <laughs> it's titled Centuries. Nostradamus. All right, stop the clock. This is the second week in a row. Unbelievable. You got seven right in 42 seconds. I Julie got, got three okay. right. How Not much is wrong with that whole... Did you see how fast... He answered. Howard didn't even finish the question. You, we have evidence of him walking in on her. Yeah. List, getting the answers read. Fred never goes first. Just mm-hmm. like never you said, Ben, he won't take an IQ test. And he always goes after the audience gets the answers read to them. Which right. I always right. That's why you go second. At the end. Or why don't you just save the answers for the very end when everybody's gone? Julie got, got three that's right. about what I expected. Oh, oh my God. Pretty much. Oh. Here's right the thing. I, I was ready to be nice I, to you. No, that's okay. It's like you just uh, you just lost. That's all. <laughs> wow, does he you always know, this mean? You don't you have know, to be uh, ungracious. How's that mean? I don't understand. Victory. I'm just speaking the you truth know, here. You know, when you win, you it's okay to be nice about it. No, it's it's like you expected to win. You just you know you you showed it's like you came in bragging. You know? Fred shows no mercy. I no. don't oh. think she did that, well, sir. Well, Fred, you've proven yourself again to be I, I may a sore I winner. I may be a bastard, but I'm smart. Right, and you're smart. <laughs> you're smarter than any Brown University graduate. Apparently That's... so. Oh, my. Fred Norris wins wow. again. Julie took balls to play Fred. Oh, I didn't know he was so mean. You know what? If I had known that... Yeah, I don't play. I wasn't arrogant. He's mean. He does not play well with others. He's not a good winner. Got to be ready to answer the questions. Not a good winner. Did you study for this or? No, I didn't study. I, I mean, really, really, Fred. You got to understand that guys like us tend to have some anger. Exactly. She's pretty, so she doesn't have to know anything. Guys like me sit at home and read. So there you go. That is horrible. You are really a horrible person, Fred. Yes, I am. You're a horrible man. And you're a loser. You're a terrible oh, man. Oh, my goodness. Oh. You're a terrible loser. Oh, my goodness. Is there any way to like him during that? No. It, no. Even just an oh. irony or just like a mean guy like where it's funny, like Pat Cooper. There's nothing no, about that. No, play it's not nice. Is There's zero comedy. At least with Pat Cooper or right. Don Rickles, it would be right. something funny. So all, all you Fredophiles, try to defend that. You can't defend that. That is unfucking real Let's go to another mean man. Let's go to uh, Fred versus the Jesus Twins, shall we? Oh, yes. <laughs> I love this. Yes. Yeah. The Jesus Twins. 
And we write the songs. Okay. No <laughs> instruments? You guys are playing the instruments? No, I'm just asking. What are you, Kurt Loader? Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, big pose. Who is that in the background? <laughs> easy, easy, easy. These, these two douches well. don't realize that they, the studio changed so they can't be seen on the show. <laughs> and they think they're still part of the show. Why don't you play some wedding music? We'll all get aroused thinking of your wife. <laughs> it's good we have the buffer between feeling a little bit sorry for cucked Fred, right, and this. Yes, because sir, now you're yes. like, good, get it, give it. Oh, I didn't feel sorry for him at all, but now oh, I'm yeah. definitely. Oh, it gets, it gets I, better. It gets I feel a little pity for that fuck. You, you can't <laughs> the guy who's kissing your wife oh, really? right in the studio. Oh, you really? Fred, that's why your music won't be on the soundtrack because you're so brilliant. That's but, how it's. Decision. But you guys realize oh, the soundtrack. No, no, listen to me. Listen. The soundtrack has already been I don't pressed. Yeah, you know. You don't understand that. The <laughs> movie soundtrack you have right Jesus now, Twins were the you best. You might as well put out fart. It is fantastic. It is fantastic. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. Can uh, we hear them? I have to you leave. You want to spend time? Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. I got here. This week. Tape two or one? Uh, tape two. Okay. Let's hear what yeah, you guys... Don't cut it off in the middle. I don't want to hear dumb... I don't need your voice. comments in the middle. I don't need your voice. No, no, no. So no, 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 guys, don't, don't tell me how to do this show. Do you think I'm not real flattered? Wait, wait, easy, easy. Sit down. He's sit talking down. to Fred now. Sit down, sit down. Sit down, sit down. Sit down, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Down. Guys, relax. Oh, no. There's our security. Guys, sit down and relax. Sit down and relax. We got people who want to fight in here. You guys got to learn how to. You got. You can't get up and start attacking people. Now screwed up. <laughs> what happened? You got to fix his friend. Play the vomit sound effect. Ja Jackie oh. thinks he can throw paper at me. This isn't Melrose, Larry Green, you douchebag. I'll come over there and break your nose. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, easy. Yes. Yeah. They they don't give a fuck. We all saw the E show of that, right? Did we all? Yeah, is it yes, one of the too? few E shows where they gave them permission to air the music. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly right. So the G, the, they get up in Fred's face, Monique, and they stare him down. And Fred will not make eye contact. He will not get up. They <laughs> challenge that tough guy. Mm -hmm. Didn't move. Up. It's the first time he's ever been physically kind of challenged like that. Can I play for you <laughs> my favorite mean Fred recording? Please. This is Fred versus Roger Dalton. Tree. And this is Ooh. the time where Pete Townsend was supposed to come on and they were talking about what they were going to talk to Pete about. And I think Pete had just been accused of boy diddling and they wanted to ask him about it, but they were specifically told not to ask him about it. So he didn't come on. Roger Daltrey happened at the same time to be coming in studio to have a discussion with the guys. Uh, Roger wasn't prepared to play any music, but Howard really wanted him to. So Fred started doing a couple of chords. So something about the beats and that um, Fred had the beats wrong. And then Fred starts arguing with Roger Daltrey about what the <laughs> correct sound is supposed <laughs> to be for the song he's about to play. Okay, and listen to this. I can't believe it. Uh, is anybody tightening it down? I haven't got a pen here. Fred, why don't you know how to play these songs? I the got news for you. He's bullshitting you. Those are the songs, Dalton. There's no thirds. There's no thirds there's in no it. There's no thirds. There's no thirds. Just sing, dude. <laughs> no. You was no, playing no, it no with no third in it. No, and no one. one. There's no thirds. You're busting my balls. The word is third. T-H-I-R-D. Oh, stop it. You don't even know what a third is. <laughs> Do you know how to play those songs? Goddamn English. Are you playing those songs? I was playing the song. He's just being a dick about it right now. He doesn't want to sing. There's no thirds in it. Doesn't want to sing. It's a major key. Could you do it I'm looking the at the tablet. You're off the internet. It says E. <laughs> it's not it's E with no. Key, we'll take the third out of it. Take the third. We out. have the internet here. Just sing over the third. <laughs> Fred, just play it without the turds. <laughs> or thirds or whatever. They are. Of Someone's the being turds. a turd here, and it ain't me. All right. What kind of dick is Fred? Wow. To Roger Daltrey because he found the what chords he... on the internet. Roger Daltrey doesn't know what he's talking about. Like seriously. Yeah, wow. It's, it's it's just because Roger Daltrey doesn't usually play guitar on whose things. That's that's Fred's thinking because I can play a guitar. He can't tell me, even though Roger Daltrey helped write the song. But yeah, what does he it's know? It's Roger that's Daltrey. Not... <laughs> Is there anything worse than righteous brainiac Fred googling shit and then shouting out an answer as if he thought yes. of it himself? Yes, righteous Robin googling shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's not as quick as Fred though. Fred comes out with the knowledge in like two minutes but he's such a dick to do, people do you think do you think roger daltrey would play king norris to go to a break on his <laughs> radio show <laughs> i don't have the uh, audio of this and i don't think we'll ever find it but the worst dick that i ever heard fred be was on the wrap-up show they were talking about dwarves one day and uh this was probably 2010 
Fred said that his wife has to physically restrain him from running up into the faces of dwarves and laughing at them when he sees them uh, on the street. God damn. So it made me realize your thing about Eric, the actor, is more than just uh, oh, he's a little guy. It's coming making, from the worst place. It's possible. like from the heart. You, you yes. really just don't like him, but you don't think he's a human. That's a yeah. good connection, Ben. I never heard that. And to admit that, people. really awful people, all of them. So, Aren't do, can we figure out why Princess Allison is moving every fucking six weeks? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! And does she actually give Fred the forwarding address, or does he just have to figure out where the fuck she moved? They have. She's moved, their own real moved, estate agent. They moved six <laughs> times in seven years. We'll probably get into this with the how much Fred makes scenario. It ranges from seven hundred thousand no. dollars, seven okay. million. I got it. I, I, don't I, gotta, know. I literally don't know. I got to play a little interlude right this second, and then we'll come okay. back to the show. Please hold. Hello, and welcome to America's favorite game show. I am your host, Mr. Whiskers, and welcome to Win Fred's Paycheck. Coming to you live from Riverbank, California, from the Warner Brothers studio. Meet today's two contestants, a model, actress, author, Superstar and star of MasterCard commercials, the lovely Beth O. And this red-headed monster who took a once funny show and destroyed it and crushed it and ruined it for everybody. Me, red-headed spirit, spirit machine. Welcome to our show, ladies. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Beth, I hear you're married to someone kind of famous. <laughs> <laughs> well, really? You must lead a very lonely life. Um, Mushy, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm just here to take Fred's paycheck. Yay! <laughs> wow. That seems kind of fucked up. Anyway... Welcome to Wins Fred's Paycheck, the only show where we just try to take Fred's paycheck, basically. We don't even have like, a first part of our show, we just go straight to it. Okay, we did a survey. Top one answer. How much money did Marcy take from Fred's paycheck? I believe his paycheck was reduced from $900,000 to Six hundred thousand dollars. Really? That's that's a, that's kind of fucked up. Um, Beth, you have anything to say about this? <laughs> um, okay. That's all the time we have today for Win Fred's Picture. Yay! Congratulations, everybody. See you next week. Wow. So if that's true. A <laughs> uh, hundred thousand dollars per sound effect uh, in a week. Yeah. So if that's true, then he got a substantial. Wait. If that's 30... true, then Fred is the dumbest, and he really should not be considered being smart. You're not making seven figures. You. You really it, it, are. It, he's got no street value. <laughs> he's a. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a yes, it does. It does. No, it doesn't. Street value <laughs> means it means nothing. He literally has absolutely the he he. Robin makes much more than he does. Yes, and that's embarrassing. I'm talking about his replaceability in terms of street value. Because if anybody listens, meaning he he can't take his value anywhere else. It doesn't matter. Well, Howard exactly. can't take his value anywhere else either. He isn't worth shit to anybody. Okay, that's not right, true. But Howard pays Robin. Fred. Robin is worth nothing to anybody. Howard is right. worth- and the guy I feel bad for is Buckwald, who went from ninety grand a year to sixty grand a year. <laughs> but of, uh, he, he's he can't believe Howard's. that it's that low. <laughs> Why do you think he deserves more? Oh, it doesn't uh, deserve it. It's just that to be on the show for that long and I to be good. an integral and allegedly integral part of the show. It, how it, how does he negotiate it, though, Dennis? Like, bald Brian on Adam Carolla's show could take his place tomorrow. And, and be have better than that. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I mean, well, there are people the now. Thing is, I think it was Infrared on our site said that he has a radio show or something, and he has the, people know how to do this. This isn't some specialized. It's like oh no, it's like being an NFL center. You snap the ball no. and block the guy in front of you. You know, how replaceable that is. Oh, absolutely. It's just, it's just so, so. You know what? Awful. What is Fred going to counter with when they say we're taking your pay down? 
Right. Which How do you... sounds right to me. I mean, I don't know if we can trust this puppet. But yeah, but I, don't, I, I, don't, uh... I don't know. He couldn't even get the couldn't even get the setup right. <laughs> Scott, 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 and Scott and Todd offered me six hundred twenty five thousand dollars. But I mean, you got to beat that. Trust the cat. Yeah, exactly. Trust the cat on this. Yeah, I I do. You know what's really sad <laughs> is that there are guys there are there are guys that have like afternoon shows on like in Tampa that make more than Fred do. do more work than How Fred much does. work does Fred do? But, Listen, listen, no, I'm like, talking like about playing the, music. They're not no, no, doing no. real work. Let's think if, if, you want, if, Fred does. if you want to hear how hard Fred works, play the Tracy uh, Millman clip, Monique. Okay. It's quick. Please. And it, it, it kind of, who's got more of a, a, a bird's eye view of what goes on in that show than the fucking office manager? And this is what Tracy had to say. Please play. I feel sometimes <laughs> I like I have no one to go to when I need something for work. Yeah, like it, it, it just up. doesn't matter to you the way it does to me. The, no. the things that I have to deal with. I was up all night. I swear to God, I, I did not get to bed till midnight last night because it was like 9:45, and I just I always check my email right before I go to bed, and I saw this email that Fred sent out. <laughs> I was almost not going to send that because and, it's, and going, I told you the no one, good can come with this, but yeah. I gotta send it. The one email that stood out was I always knew Gary was an elitist, racist, homophobic, yeah, disgusting pig. Bad. That was bad. So I was like, <laughs> so so now based on that one email. I'm like racist, homophobic. Yeah, I gotta start. You know what could it? What could it be? Right. I don't know, Tracy. It's tough this radio business. Yeah. It's lonely. It's lonely. It's lonely. I want to be Fred. Fred's got to be easy. <laughs> Play sound effects. I'll do it. That's it. And, and everybody in the office, uh, as sixty something people working there, she goes to Fred as the easiest job on the show, as the most, and, and I would perceive as the most replaceable. Oh, yeah. absolutely. But but Robin could replace with anybody who knows how to read. I mean. Well, I, 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 I will give Robin the, the sense of that Howard's comfortable at her, her laughing at every horrible Benji joke written for him at the time he wants. That's the only, yeah, and so Fred's there's a comfort the zone. Fred's and not him, the, the Fred's not track. doing that. Fred laughs at all the wrong times. Fred's not the laugh track. Well, that's a good segue into this classic clip. It's I have Sal sitting in the seat. I <laughs> see that there's a change in personnel. Yeah, I meant to tell you, Fred's gone. Wow. Yeah, that's enough of him. Uh, after all these years, you finally said that's it? Well, you know, my 30 years, <laughs> I finally got rid of his ass. I feel good about it. Really? Oh, yeah. Well, I noticed a lot of insubordination from Fred. <laughs> that's right. He was acting up. <laughs> now, Fred had an illness in the family, so he had to leave today. Couldn't be around today or tomorrow, so I told Sal to sit in that chair and... Just be quiet. No one will know the difference. It's Whoa. funny because I saw all the preparation yesterday. Yeah. And I thought them. Sal was going to have a heart attack. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, I Sal, never saw him look of fear like that. I know. I wrote Sal a note. I said, Sal, I need you to take over the uh, French chair for two days. <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> Howard, Howard said, do nothing. <laughs> yeah, I wrote him a note. I said, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> Just sit there. Just sit there. Don't feel compelled to be Fred. Well, looks like a nasty rainstorm out there, I'll tell you that. <laughs> 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 and Fred always came up with it. <laughs> Fred could handle that. Yeah, yeah. Anybody could do his job. There's a couple of really good Fred moments in the world, like this one, which I really love. Colin Quinn's Rose, because I love that. How about Fred? He looks like a retarded Gary Oldman. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the major day in a meth lab from the 70s, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> and then um, let's do a stark contrast to view my opening thing. All right, go ahead. And my closing. All right, go ahead. Because I'm so bored by the rest of this. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Fred roasting Howard. I don't mind if you roast me. The comedic no, genius. Right. But, uh, Fred, are you going to get up to the podium? Yeah, come no, on. I have Fred, to run my own like... sound effects. All right, go ahead. Oh, here's sound effects. Uh, I have sound effects. Cringing. Jackie. Gary. Robin. Dickhead. <laughs> what can be said about our big beaked, long nosed, huge nostrilled friend that hasn't been said already? <laughs> Not funny. When Howard was That's born, a joke. January 12th, it's, wow. a regular, it's a regular Jeff Ross. A terrible thing. What a delivery. He lived. <laughs> <laughs> Howard was an ugly baby. When he was born, the doctors wanted to add a tail. <laughs> but seriously, I've known Howard for 21 years, and success really hasn't changed him. He's still the same miserable prick that he was 21 years ago. <laughs> Only now, his wife would finally agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, we can't forget Howard's wife, 
Too bad he did. <laughs> <laughs> but Howard did have a plan for his marriage. It's called neglect. <laughs> Howard never told his wife that he wasn't good enough for her. He just let her let it come as a surprise. <laughs> now this is a rose. That's Finally, a rose, and it's directed to Howard, me. Yes. Look on the bright side. Yes. Be glad that your wife kicked you out for being the world's worst husband. Because <laughs> if you'd stayed in a bad marriage, you would have ended up like Jackie Martling. <laughs> <laughs> now there's there's a schmuck. <laughs> Imagine being married to his prize. <laughs> wow. You, wow. you talk about reveling in your own self sabotage of your own marriage. Listen to Howard, how giddy he is. He's out of it with Allison. He checked out of that marriage five, six years before this thing even had. He's so happy to listen to that. The lack of comedy is is yeah. You know, and I was waiting. So awesome. I was waiting for Fred to turn it towards Jackie because that's usually what he does. Yeah. Is he turns and uh, fires off at Jackie instead of the target. But, but well, how, pure how funny was that though? I mean, it was horrible. Still did more. <laughs> Classic rock, horrible delivery when it comes to just anything joke oriented. You, you know, know what? He's, he's vocally works. overtrained. Yes, yes, <laughs> over enunciating. Yes, that's exactly right. Over enunciating kills comedy. I love this one too. I, this is like a classic Fred moment. But we're invited. To, really? uh, didn't Common didn't send a gift? Yeah, because that's generally the rule of thumb. If you don't go, you send a gift. Right. A uh, who? Wait, 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 <laughs> no, I, 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 I gave Will a gift. You did? Yeah, he gave me a gift. Oh, okay. I said who I was referring to. Who were you referring to? Uh, the quiet guy in the studio. The quiet guy. Fred? Uh, Fred? <laughs> no comment. Oh. <laughs> Fiscal year 08. <laughs> Fred didn't get you a gift? You should see the look on John's face. John loves it. <laughs> can't wait. Think that was malicious? Or he no, he, he sent me a note. He said, uh, hey, uh, I can't make it, which was no surprise, but uh, you should expect something from the wedding fairy soon. But the wedding fairy never arrived, apparently. That's not Fred's fault. <laughs> That's a good point. That's anyway, true. Mambo. The wedding fairy's fault. Well, look, it's only been three months. I don't care. I just bring that up. To three months. He still it has to get it over. Wow. Is that right, Fred? You didn't uh, send Will a... Uh, uh, but it is coming. And I'm not trying uh, to stiff you, Will. Sorry. If you'd like, I'll give you part of your gift now, and I'll go out to the ATM and get you a rest of it later. Really? Really? Wow. That's what you're forced to do? But wait, listen to this. Listen to the. Listen to Veal 2 here. <laughs> I'm to go to my account and get two checks this week. One was for Will and one was for Jason. I have to go to my accountant and get two checks this <laughs> week. Yeah. Come on. Wow. Howard, Howard, helped, uh, Howard helped Fred set up a banking account in the 80s. And Fred continues to go to a, a business manager slash accountant to handle all of his check writing. Do you think he has to go to his business manager when he goes to the fucking guitar center in Comac every three days or the Harley Davidson shop in Oyster Bay? Do you think he has to go to his accountant for what a lying sack of shit? Can you imagine? Poor Will. Poor Will. I wonder if he, and you know what? They guilted him into it. He was definitely not going to give a gift. I would say if I had to name a voice of reason on this show, it would be Will. Will. Yeah, Yeah, it's Will. Isn't he one of the smarter ones on the show he's, too? He's yeah, the least he hateable. Yeah, I guess he's just the least. I guess he's, you know he's the least hateable. I want to go into a little gay rich because I'm trying to do some like oh, classic yes, Fred. The wedding. So the setup to this is Fred is getting married and they decide to hold a bachelor party for him at Scores, <laughs> and Fred gets so incredibly shit faced. That was actually the night where he fell and banged his mm-hmm. head on the stair. And mm-hmm. cracked his, right? Like cracked his chin, head wasn't it? Chin. He had stitches yeah, or yeah. something, right? Gay Rich happened to be there. Fred was very, very into Gay Rich. I, I think there's an awful lot of projection from Howard, especially, mm-hmm. and Ralph, that they were seeing gay stuff that I'm not sure actually happened because Gay Rich makes it seem like it didn't really happen. Yeah, well, back then, Gay Rich was the conduit for all things gay. He, he actually yeah. was courageous at the time. There mm-hmm. wasn't a lot of people coming out. Now everybody's gay on the show. Every whack pack or every <laughs> Howard's dream is everybody's gay, and he can claim to be not, not yeah. gay. But- Correct. And Fred, I guess, was so out of it. I didn't realize. I didn't know what was going on. Maybe Fred's gay or something. But Gay Rich was stroking his head and had his arms around him. And- it's raining now. I'm like, wow, what's going on? And someone said, oh, Fred's drunk. And um, I know that he's drunk because I walk by and there's a gay man in a leopard skin thong sitting on Fred's lap. But I'm like, hey, you know what? I have shit I have to do. Howard's friend, Neil, just was obsessed with me. Please get in this G-string. Please get in this thong, whatever you want to call it. And, of course, a couple drinks later, why the hell not? I was going to give it to Fred because he probably cherishes it more than I do. I go over to him, trying to be fun and good, 
And I'm ho- like kind of holding him up on this banquette. But I guess to everybody else, it looked like we were cuddling. And I'm asking him if he wants bread, anything like that to absorb up all the tequila that was in his system. He's like whispering to me, like putting his head in my neck. I'm holding him. And right now, the world is just Fred and I. Like, I'm just trying to keep him okay and upright and everything. I turn, I see Howard, and everybody's staring. Gay Rich says that Howard's friend Neil was like hounding him all night. You got to get in this. You got to get in this little mm-hmm. thing. Oh, remember that guy? Neil? Yeah, Neil, yeah. Yeah, he was OJ Mask. Yeah, yeah. But he, yeah. he, he uh, God. it's just weird. I mean, there's, I think Howard liked being around aroused men mm-hmm. more yes. than he liked being around half naked women. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And the reality yeah. is, if you have a little twink like Gay Rich sitting on your lap, people are going to take notice. I mean, this is like... Yes. But I don't know that I can believe that Not he was me. sitting on his lap. Because I, Gay Rich would... Why would Gay Rich lie about it? I think they have all alternate uh, realities going on here. Yeah, I do, too. I mean, uh, Gay, how Gay Rich is telling the truth. I know Gay Rich is Exactly. You wanna, let's hear Fred and Howard. It's called Fred is Gay, the email. Fred had a rule, remember? He says, I don't date people I work with. That's oh, right. You don't crap where you eat. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. But meanwhile, I wasn't dating anybody, and the guy hadn't had sex. So I said, okay, the guy's a homo. So one night, we're in a hotel room, <laughs> and uh, we're in the room, and I'm getting ready for bed, and I, uh, you know, I have my pants off and stuff. I'm walking around in my underwear, brushing my teeth. Bait, baiting the trap. Yeah, baiting him, you know, because, you know, my body will really turn a guy on. <laughs> and uh, like Fred, Fred got into a corner. And like literally just like he was, I remember he got changed really super fast. Like the way you get changed in gym class in fifth grade. Yeah, what he did was he got into the corner, he pulled his pants and his shirt off real fast. He was wearing boxer shorts and he quickly jumped into the bed. You know what I mean? Like so I wouldn't well, I see him. I saw how excited you were getting. So I said, man. I said, what's his story? I Why said, did you do that, Fred? Did you think he might be interested in you? You want to know something? I always picked up a vibe from him that he was slightly homo. Oh, oh really? such a liar. I swear to I'm God. I'm a married man. All right, and I'll, I'll tell you the truth. I'll tell you the truth. When I started on this yeah. show and I you guys swear. used to do your your homo thing, yeah. you and Fred, I always thought you two were way too good at it. And it was a time at Club Benet when I was watching yep. you two really getting into it. And I, I said to myself... Is this the like the emperor's? Is this like right in my face? And, and these two are screaming homos, and I oh, can't. Sure. Howard, I know the time. I can, I can tell you the exact time. You all right, two so, are so believable. Uh, like right. these two are really in love. I can tell you the. Exact all right, I made out with them once. All right, I can tell you the time. Exactly I'm not talking about this up. Yeah. We were all talking about it. Robin had this purple silk right, shirt, yes. and Fred put it on, <laughs> and, and it was. Just, I don't know. It just was like it he was right. Transformed. Yeah. It's just, my color. It, okay. I don't know. It was like Frosty's hat. Fred, of all of them, may very well be the repressed homosexual. Of the crew. Yeah, well, I've, I've floated the theory that <laughs> Howard groomed him. Uh, Howard recognized this boy of who, with the uh, turbulent past, Interesting. when they were both in Hartford, Fred would sometimes come over and stay over at Howard's house, which is just weird. You don't think of Howard as being a guy who says, not at all. come and stay over. Unless but I think out. it would be sometimes that Allison was not there. Obviously, I don't think anything happened at that time I because that. Fred was only suspect he was suspicious that howard was gay fred was still in college though too when yeah he was- yeah he was a college kid groomed i think by you know that that he eventually like, groomed, like he groomed ralph and you know he recognizes boys with father issues father hunger father hunger and the only time he's ever had house guests is when he got the huge mansion on 17th squad so like no one's gonna be around that's because there's so much spacing like one room is in west hampton and the other bedrooms in <laughs> south hampton and yeah. the other bedrooms in east hampton so like howard's you never that house is so big you're never really around it it's easy to have guess when you don't really have to be around the person and yeah that that fred thing that's a great point i love that point and you know it just kind of explains yeah. why he's like fred i need you to stay in touch with me i need you to be the guy to come down i mean fred was a dj and mm-hmm. he goes i need you to come down and be my producer in uh, how right. dc why would he be a producer like why him i know yeah and he was why, the overnight yeah. guy why would he you're an on-air him? personality why are you going to come and be a Put on this Earth Dog character. But he was the overnight guy. Why would he even know him? Well, they overlapped. Did they? Fred would be there. Yeah. yeah Fred, so, put away his, Fred put yeah. away his records. I mean, so, literally, that's the story. The yeah, overnight the guy right, passes the baton of the morning guy. Yeah. Well, How- Howard claims his OCD forbade him from putting back his messy it, records. No, it, was his la- it was his laziness that exactly. forbade him but, from yeah. putting away. But also, how how passionately collaborative were they on that Backside Boys song? Those two, right? I mean, yeah. if you go listen to, I should I should have got that. How, they are so into it. 
I mean, not not even in an ironic. They they really really love gay gay way. And I listened. Mm-hmm. I heard it the other day, and I thought they're way too into this. We got to listen to a little bit of uh, sounds of Kinnison too. You know why I want to do that? Because you have it, right? I, yeah, I give it to me. I gave I. I Googled today Fred Norris genius because I wanted to make sure that people who <laughs> I wanted to make sure who people who actually consider Fred a genius are represented on the show. You remember I said we texted yeah. earlier about that. Oh, that's the gateway. <laughs> this song makes me cry, makes me crave a man's backside. This queer song played I feel like I'm it comes from. gay I watch the telly While Ralph shaves my belly Six or seven inches could I handle eight Am I going gay? Get gay why this song it makes my ass Jesus Christ. This oh is my the, uh, God. Hero to all LGBTQ. Okay. <laughs> ben, I, I, deserving I, an award. Yeah, he keeps turning them down. They wanted to play this. I feel like ceremony. that's the last time Howard's done anything off desk duty. That's the last time he participated in a bit to that magnitude. You know what? Every now and then, and at this new, these new guys have kind of sparked a little bit in him because they just played last week or two weeks ago. Him, it's supposed to be a secret recording of him watching The Bachelor, right? And mm-hmm. he's just okay. like, "Oh my god, oh yeah, you did it!" You know, his acting is always so bad. Yes, but yes, so every now and then he'll do something. What do you, you want me to play, uh, Ben? <laughs> the sounds of Kinnison, which, oh. like I said, when I went, when I googled Fred Stur- Fred Norris genius, I wanted to see what people who love Fred. Despite what we know about him, how can you still love Fred? I mean, right. all right, so he played some clucking sound effects when a when a Mexican came into the studio, and that's and funny. Yep. But you can't do that forever. You can't laugh and say forever he's a genius. He, and, he will never update his reference drawer. That is not well. Happening. He takes that off the table now because oh, he oh yeah, not allowed her, anymore. That's yeah. right. That's but right. Um, the sounds of Kinnison is. Like the comments on YouTube are like how touching the song is and how great it is. How many, if you guys had the ballpark, how many sound effects does he play? And oh, what are shit. the, if at all, what is, what are you hearing uh, now? He's less than 10. It's less than 10. It, literally it's less than 10. If it's that many, I'll go a little higher and say like maybe oh. 30 to 50. Is it just oh. Ronnie and J- is it just Ronnie and JD and like George Takei? Because because Dennis, every now and then the, the guys in the back office who were much faster in the draw will give him something new. Like I'm a cowboy. Okay, or, right, right, right. Benji, uh, yeah. But on you, average, I mean, there, there are days he almost doesn't play any, I and mean, there are where he plays very few, like almost nothing. I mean, right. like maybe two. He really uh, just it, does the commercials and like their new big thing, which is to yep. play Howard's playlist. Where he has the words <laughs> in front of him. He'll 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 often play two commercials at once. Yes, yes, he does. He'll fuck up. Well, yeah. Can I can I segue you to a clip? This was like the third day of K Rock, and Fred does not. They have an hour. They have a year and a half or two years to get ready for this. And Fred is that was the Luddite clip. Oh, it's serious. You mean? Yeah, it's serious. So Fred okay. does not know how to use the equipment, and he's literally playing two. As Ben just said, like two commercials at once. He still does it. And, yeah, he still does. and they have you know, he's only done it about four hundred times since then. Yeah. <laughs> maybe we'll. Maybe what we'll do is we'll end the show with sounds of Kinnison. That'll be like our. Yeah, that's. Fun. Oh God. And, you know <laughs> what have they done to deserve that? I know. I'm sorry. All right. All right. No, not all. I don't even have my headphones. Wait a second. Okay. Now, Fred, what I was saying is, when you're done with your pre-recorded commercials, you can jingle, do whatever you want, play a bit, and then play a song. So that gives me a, a little time to prepare. I, I, you know, same thing every time. All right. Doesn't change. Okay. Okay. We're getting it together. No, well, now, I'm here now. And you're going to jingle. Wait, stop. All right. All right.
I just, I just, I'm, I'm back here's, now. Here's the deal. I said to you exactly what we're going to do. No, no, and I, and I and, told, and then you told me different. Like, no, I'm telling. I've got, Tom, am on, I telling him the same I've thing every witnesses. time? No, come on. I said to you, we're going to do Heineken. Out of Heineken, we were going to do the song. But how crazy! This is crap. No, Fred, listen no, no. to me. I'm going to say but it again. I will, I will do I'll, what you I'll want. Let me say it again. But in this instance, you were wrong. Okay, I'm wrong. So just listen to what I want, remember? okay? Never mind what yeah. I, I'm wrong or right. All right. All right here's I, what I need. I'm wrong no matter what. <laughs> You're not wrong. You were right. Now just listen to what it is I need to have done. Can All you right. please listen? I'm listening. Okay, because I'm going to say it for the 50th time. When you, go to a comer- time. when you go to a commercial break, do your jingle with your bits or anything you want, just like at, the, at K-Rock. Correct. Okay. And at K-Rock, we used to do the, the, the live commercial, then a jingle out and whatever we did. Okay. It was always self-contained. All right, okay. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. All right. You jingle, you do what you want. Mm-hmm. All right? All right. I'm just saying that's going to screw us up. Okay. But that's all right. All right. I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. 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 I'm going to make... Such a creature of habit. Jesus, fuck. It's... it's wow. yeah, and they, Now, you got to remember, too, they're, they're just getting a serious... you got a $500 million man. Now, they got to qualify the salary and his idiot staff... You got a year and a half to, to, to practice and prepare for this. This guy's got one fuck like the center of a, of a football team. Snap yeah, one the job, ball, one block job. the guy in front of you. Watch what I'm saying. Snap the ball, block the guy in front of you. He can't do this. Jingle or play a bit, whatever you want to do. Could be four minute bit, one minute bit. Okay. Shh. All right. Just listen. I'm gonna make this easy. I'll do the live commercial like you want me to. <clears throat> then you play your pre records. After your pre records are all done, play another jingle. Mm-hmm. Or what a bit. Anything. Correct. And then give me a rock song. Or a, or a, any song you want. A funny song, anything. Whatever you want. And then I'll come back, and if you have another live, I'll do it there. I know there's a no cursing rule, but I'm ready to let loose with like a roll of epithets. Like, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking Greek or something. Because right, I'm going to say it only, again. Not only that, yesterday you said to me, don't play it. Don't play a bed. Then you turn around and go play a bed. Where's the bed? What am I going to do without right, this? I'm going to say it again. So this. everyone has it do, at do home. Do you realize that maybe you're like changing okay. your mind? Maybe and I am. Thing and not saying. Oh, I know. Now All you're right. patronizing. Now me. everyone can. Now no, no, really no, no you're off. right. Now I'm going to be very clear. No, I've got it. When I say. I've fucking got it. <laughs> when I say take wow. a break, I fucking got it. Oh my. Whatever, man. Hey, dude. Come on, I'm trying. No, you're not. You play the you're busting my fucking balls. I don't know for the f word. All right. Oh, the, now, uh, now you've got a problem with that. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, and you're just saying that you don't have to rely on that. I'm you don't have to. We we get you angry. Oh, no, I'm angry. Say you're angry. You don't have to use the f word. I am angry. I'm pissed. Wait, the this f- is on serious, and they don't want him to use yes. the f word. This is this is. You this don't is remember three that? Days in. No, yeah. I don't. You don't remember? He wanted not to use cursing that much when they were yeah, on as serious. A crutch. As a right. crutch. I wanted to bring something up that uh, Lorena Blanche had written on the thread. Wasn't there a period of time where there was some uh, controversy back in the day over Fred being named co-head writer with Jackie? Yes. Currently, Benji and Will Murray have been named the head writers. Is Fred just not any kind of head writer anymore? Or is he That's still a, a co-head writer with those two unfunny loads? Well, if that if that pay cut, that thirty percent pay cut is if, true, that makes sense. If yeah, that pay tough. level is true, then absolutely, because he doesn't he's even contributing he nothing. Doesn't even pick out the yeah, he doesn't even pick out the songs anymore. Those all come from Howard's playlist. Those yeah. are his playlist. The whole thing is all he does whole... now is desert, decide which emails and tweets Howard gets to hear. Yeah, Fred <laughs> is now is hidden behind a wall, so you wouldn't even know he was in the room if you were watching the app. <laughs> Only was if they John, bring out the puppets. Was it a John Mellencamp or something that came in there and was like, who is this guy? What, that guy just popped up. Who is that? And they just it, and Howard wouldn't acknowledge like Fred's existence. And then all, it, it's like when a new guest comes in and he's not aware of the surroundings in that compound. And you see Fred like, I don't really understand. It. Where is he hiding? And uh, Mostly Joking writes, I firmly now believe Benjamin's theory that he was the original troubled kid, groomed gay concubine pre-Ralph. He ate rivers of shit <laughs> at and around his wedding Gay spurned, just mean Howard. He decided to throw out his pride and take it many years ago. Funny when he's fast on the drops. Okay, true. Yeah. Howard's, I mean, one of the big things, too, that I saw about Fred that people would praise him for is his loyalty to Howard. So they'll say, like, oh, he'll never write a tell-all. You have no options. That's exactly what I was going to say. That's you saying, you know, the positive side of my having no options is it makes me look loyal. Because don't you think if (laughs) King Norris had sold three million records... Fred would not be there in the morning playing sound effects. It's like calling Robin picky. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) 
or loyal. Robin, you know what Chris Rock said, a man is only as loyal as his options. That's what they are, too. Yes, exactly. I mean, if her talk show, the TV one, not the chatter, had taken off, her loyalty's uh, gone. Gone. She's if, gone. Le- if Jay Leno had wanted her instead of stuttering John, her loyalty's gone. Don't you think to some extent, and again, it's basically shitting where you eat and, and doing something against your own best interests, but don't you think Buckwald oh. maybe scuttled both Fred and Robin being able to do anything else because they made a deal with the devil in some way? I, I really think it's like making a deal with the Godfather when you go to Don Buckwald because you are paying protection in a way. How You're not going to get fired but you're also not going to truly benefit in the way that somebody who pays for an agent would right. benefit. Yeah. You're just giving him your, in the case of Fred, 60 grand a year. You're not going to get any other work, but you're not going to lose this work. Well, they That's give, right. they have given their undying loyalty and yielding because neither Fred nor Robin in the scheme of the entirety of that uh, team have done anything else. But they've attempted they've to, to succeed. Come on. Rob was on Fresh Prince <laughs> yeah. of Bel-Air. Come yeah, on. Right. Pre, <laughs> no, pre right. And the movie called what, The Deadly Web? Pre-serious, <laughs> though. Web. Pre-serious. After serious, <laughs> right. that was it. And, so they and got- she tried. Well, she tried. She tried filling in for someone on. Um, was it Joy Behar? She tried filling in right. for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah, yeah. she yes, yes. she has made her attempts, and I think every once in a while, Buckwald has to to give them something to say. Hey, look, we're that trying. ninety grand a year you're paying me finally paid off. Right, here's your shot. Club fucking put it right. There was a time with his work where the drops were nothing short of brilliant. Now he is just slow and predictable if he even plays a drop at all. I do love that he can't stand Robin for pretty much the same reasons most of us here can't stand her. Off the top of my head, I remember hearing that Fred A auditioned for Saturday Night Live, horribly from reports. B, I believe both he and Howard auditioned for VH1 at the same time that Gary did. Just never heard those tapes. C, put together King Norris, not as a cover band to go play and make some side cash, as we all thought. Stuttering John tells the story that King Norris came after Fred saw John got a record deal. He was not only jealous, but he also referred to giving up his rock and roll dreams. And then D, D. Snyder says that he would often see Fred out at auditions for voiceover work. Well, Howard claims every single movie scenario in which they use a radio guy that he got offered it first. Always. No matter what, whenever they have like, you know, they do like a radio scene in a movie or there's a background thing he always claims he got offered at first and he's like you know trying to the too cool for school thing to turn it down you're so selective your brand is so precious <laughs> throwing baloney at people's asses yeah. we really want to protect that precious brand so true by having- such a precious yeah. brand i know it's so fucking funny to me i when robin williams said good morning vietnam he swore that was taken from him yes yes oh, yeah. yes oh, like, from his time in vietnam even though it was yeah, he- a real person <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah. Which was, I mean, that was like one of the early on times where I kind of went, no, you're full of shit, Howard. He'd have to shave his head. He'd have to shave his head. Even if yeah. he had a role, that would that'd be interesting to know anyone. Yeah, he'd have to, to, to play Robin. <laughs> Uncle Larry wrote, it's the Herman Munster, Nicole Bass, oh, Robin just Jenna, read that. China you, voice is old and tired. That Same. Fred, la- that Howard it, laughs at like it's brand new it, every time. Post, it, it was funny. Know. It was funny 30 years ago. Okay. That was 30 – it was 30 yeah. years ago. It's not funny anymore. You know what's funny? 30 years ago, the deliverance battle of do-do-do-do-do-do. Exactly. Yes. When they did dueling Andy Rooney's back in the 80s, and exactly. they continue to do that. If if that dial-a-date never existed, do you think Fred would have ended up with Crazy Alice? <laughs> no. <laughs> My girlfriend, no. Gecko. That's his says, biggest fan. That's his, Fred's biggest fan. Gecko yeah. says, creepy, untalented monster. And it's true. Uh, <laughs> I love, I love <laughs> well, there is Judy Tenuta bringing up that. Do you think that the dial date was fake? That he was already dating Allison? Uh, good one. No. You know, if you're. If I don't think so. No, I heard it Fred, live. Fred was That's a like fill in. There, yes. there was actually supposed to be a guest that day who was a no show, and Fred volunteered himself. Of course, Tooth Beth is a really good post, as usual. Uh, Fred Norris had a childhood of unspeakable no tragedies. Him far more serious than anyone else ever associated with the show. According to him, he has anger problems that seem to fester and boil under the surface. And someday we'll hopefully get to the witness this on air. He seems to let off a little steam out in public every now and again against the peasants. Like the time while he was waiting in his crutch using wife to hobble back to the car from some afternoon shopping, Fred confronted the man on the parking lot in front of him by not moving his truck fast enough for Fred. Or when Freddie threw the glass of wine at the rainbow room and destroyed the table. Hopefully his wife isn't 
a punching bag now, whether it's emotionally or physically at home. And Tess doesn't have to hear the yelling every night. Now, if he wants to leap over the console and crack the goblin right in the nose, I'm all for that violence. He also has an odd sexual history where he fixated on women, like his obsession with that waitress in the early days. But I digress. <laughs> I don't think Hess, Tess hears anything because he's not around. Uh, <laughs> I quite think he's, and I think he's totally henpecked when he gets home. Yeah, but I think when he goes home, I, I don't think I don't think they stay in the same apartment. I, I quite honestly don't think they're in the same oh, fucking here, household. Here's another conspiracy theory from the Jack. No, it's not a conspiracy theory. It literally their marriage is is as fucked up as humanly possible. If you look at the dynamics, look. When's the last time Allison has been on anything? You think that their marriage is more fucked up than Howard and Beth's? Because Howard and Beth aren't married. Th- th- that's okay. Oh, stop that. <laughs> Would you just right. No, they're not. Show me a certificate. Show me proof that it's not a You know, a second ago, you were saying, you know, I don't believe Fred and, and Allison were on a, on a date. And I thought, man, we're on the same page here. And then you go right back to, they're not no, married. They're not, <laughs> they're not married. But no, the thing is, when's the last time Allison has actually been included on anything? She chooses uh, Dennis, to. I, I saw Allison was on season five of Bones, uh, episode 16. <laughs> what was she playing, TNT. a dead body? <laughs> like anything associated with the show. How about when uh, when Gary's father's wake, Allison was like, uh, "Fred, uh, that's a good. I'm good. Take the motorcycle. I'm good. You can go on the. You can go on the bike." So she didn't even do that. Fred went to Gary's dad's wake on a Harley. Even though she's a realtor, which I don't, I, I use that term loosely because are we if, all? If you look at her real estate uh, website, yeah. you know she joined this other group, and the listings that are mm-hmm. under Allison's name are actually under her boss's name, so they're not really hers per se. I think what Allison <laughs> does is is, is is she more of a player, or is stuttering stuttering John more of a player? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> mm. I think that Allison probably spends most of the weeks, similar to Beth, out in Amagansett with Tess. I think they go out yes. to the country and they spend the summers out there. And that's probably when Fred doesn't see her. Um, but they, fuck, they move an awful lot. I don't know. Um, I want to read from Weird, one of our huh? new, I want to read from one of our new members, Crazy Robin. Fred met, Fred met Howard at the right time. This was a man who was single and socially <laughs> awkward. Someone that Howard could exploit. Fred is repressed and angry. I believe he has a learning disability. He's not smart at all. Only able to recall answers, but ask him a question that requires context and he's not able to answer. Only stammer. His angry masks his own fears. To leave the show and branch out on his own, which is why he projected his anger onto Jackie, stuttering John, Billy. I find him the most animated and involved in the show when Artie was there. Just fake laughs. Playing dumb when they want to change or avoid a subject matter brought up is beyond old. Comedians Mm -hmm. are knowledgeable and quite bright and quick-witted, and neither he nor Howard or Robin have any of those qualities. Fred has been useless for years, but that goes along with Howard and Clueless Robin. Mm. Fred is completely checked out, if ever fully checked in. He uses drops as his voice and now has gone silent. (laughs) Very nice. There's some great posts in this thread. Uh, Laundry Room writes, uh, I used to really like Fred, but as I get older, I realize he's a hack. Look at when he tried to be look. At, he tried to be funny for Regis and Kelly in the winter time, and Kelly was like, "What's this guy doing?" You guys see, have you guys seen that video? Yeah. I have. I have. Fred, they go, "Is it cold out there?" And Fred responds by like miming that he's shivering cold. Yes, they don't even it's know who so he is. Annoying. Though. No, they didn't know who he was. No, uh, that is the best summarization of Fred. No one knows or cares who he is. He's unfunny, but he thinks he's Chevy Chase at the end of the day, and he's just another button pushing. Fuck, although I love the idea that Fred is neighbors or whatever with Lauren Michaels in Amagasset, <laughs> which you know drives Wigward bonkers. Yeah, Lauren Michaels lives in uh, Amagasset. Mm-hmm. It's uh, to say. Why is this man, uh, uh, Kurt Waldheim Jr., to get on my show? He's angling to be the new G.E. Smith, right, John? <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's, that's out right. There, he's out there Netflix. noodling on his guitar. That's just right. going. Very nice. Well, I, I, this is from Bon Jovial. He's a newer poster oh, like on him. here. Yeah. And he has this. This is a pretty interesting thought process. Uh, it is possible that Fred's attack on Carol Alt came from Allison. He'd probably heard her bitching about her jealousy of Carol mm. often. Allison so desperately wanted to be a movie star and no doubt a supermodel, LOL. So when Carol said, Fred who? He was insulted and had a lot of ammo to immediately throw at her through everything Allison had whined about. Interesting. That's not bad. That's not bad. I like that. I never but, thought of that angle. But the thing what? is, though, the hate actually comes from inside of Fred. His hatred of women yeah, he's, is true. 
<laughs> yeah, he was not being uh, he wasn't kidding when he said that, you know, uh, you hot girls don't have to rely on your personalities or whatever. I, exactly. this is what I had to do. And <laughs> it's just, you know, barely beneath the surface, that resentment. The, the, the Carol Alt thing is simultaneously the creepiest and most vapid passion I've ever heard anyone have that absolutely no one can get behind. I really, I really remember hating him. That day. Monique, I know you have the clip. It's is horrible, it too though. low? Yeah, it's horrible. Alt right. Yeah. Because he he literally he literally called a real a real supermodel not a real supermodel or not a model at all. Literally <laughs> calling her ugly. He literally called her ugly. Beefus gets a pass with him. <laughs> that that wonky that wonky well, uh, fucking horse that that really shows his transition from earth dog to lap dog over the years and he will do <laughs> any, he, right. he he will sit on Howard's lap bark at anyone who attacks who comes near him you know <laughs> lather him up and love everything that Howard loves there's a clip where that's not in that same uh, low bitrate and it uh, Christy Chinkley working model Fred this is where a caller calls Fred and asks him if Beth is a supermodel. Going off the Carol all hideous That's his new slogan. Mike in Pittsburgh. I have a question for Fred. Uh, with all his criteria and his little quirks, I, I want to know, Fred, do you think uh, Beth is a supermodel? No. No, she's not. She's never claimed to be one or, or been called one. Yeah, right. But she's a successful uh, model, if, that's, if that answers your question. She's always uh, said she's a working model. She right. does catalog and does... Uh, she's, she's, not, she's never had a uh, campaign. Not like that top 10 kind of thing but she's she works every day and you know who she is so <laughs> but, but she's not a supermodel there's your yeah, lapdog I mean he always any model that comes in there Fred always you know that tells me a... people are so strange she's, she was shopping yesterday she's in the store and a woman walks you sound up like victim, victim, victim story looking at her and says Beth now beautiful she goes yeah she goes uh yeah. Oh my God. She goes. You're very beautiful. Oh Not like those God. horrible pictures they put of you in the newspaper. Oh jeez. Uh, they and and <laughs> I, I said to Beth, "What are, are people insane?" Yes. I mean, they're really nuts. Yeah. I mean, what is, what is the convoluted logic between like like going up to a stranger and saying those horrible pictures they put of you in the paper? Right. I mean, it, you know, it was just crazy. That reflex Wait. victim humble brag he goes yeah. to with her. Wow. Uh, Aren't non celebrities the worst? That's <laughs> <laughs> really, 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 yes. It's so true. That's the subtext behind that. That's one of uh, 8,000 death victimized in public by somebody every day during that by, period. By unwashed masses. Let's go to you, the you, little, your, uh, your mind races to say something nice something. about her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Beth thinking on her toes comes up with, I love animals. I love animos. How many times has Howard called her a supermodel? A bunch of times he called her a supermodel. But Monique, wasn't that the perfect lapdog response? As Absolutely. Isn't perfect. that just so perfect? So let's go to some contemporary Fred Norris. So I love this clip, Benjamin. Uh, Fred Norris does a kazoo cover of Great American Night. Oh, you won't love it when you hear it. I will. Oh. Do we picture Fred playing a little plastic kazoo <laughs> in his apartment? Like, that's what he's doing to kill time for the four so days l- that he's l- Left to his own devices, Monique. You got that, and you got yeah. your Instagram thread. This is oh, the- my the- God. Misunderstood that- genius is spending his Yeah. Good morning, everyone. What you're listening to is a kazoo version of... The opening theme to our song written by Rob Zombie. As pro- that's horrible. I, I that's horrible. so. I, I have a question though because it came out that Rob has a um, an agreement about the show, the song being used in the opening. Did, did that count? <laughs> no, I'm serious. Well, that that's a great point. No, it's right. right. I mean, right. They, they, they get royalties for. to cover that. I mean, does he get his royalties for that piece of shit being played? Wow, for the 35 speaking cents. Of, speaking of piece- was, um, I'm remiss if we don't play Cookie <sighs> Puss because I was listening to yes. it today and it really made me laugh. I love that bit. 
I loved Howard making believe he was like a sympathetic cookie puss. I love that that's what Fred would give his mother like every birthday. But what I do definitely want to play right this moment is where Fred is today. And what Fred is today is basically the puppeteer that Howard always wanted to be. He is behind a wall, basically, completely marginalized, not to be shown, not to be an integral part of any conversations, of any um, interviews, of anything. Just a little taste of who he is today. Here we go. Good evening, cunts. Yeah, that was yeah. it. Testing think, one, two, I three. Know, I don't know. Why did the cunt cross the road? Why? <laughs> to get to the cock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gypsies, cunts, and thieves. <laughs> the conversation. Uh, it's not like I just got uh, in front of screaming. Uh, yes, it is. That's no, my car alarm. <laughs> this is Fred also posturing that he's some like super intellectual erudite and ronnie is this philistine neanderthal from from right. queens meanwhile there's nothing fred's doing on air that's any more intellectual than what ronnie does no. le- when left to his own devices no it's a so i love great observation you're exactly right and, and he's also using the oldest trick in the book which is that's not me saying that that's my character my character that. my puppet Right. So that's how Howard is able to, you know, use racism through his back office puppet callers. And he makes it sure he gets it on the air. But he also gets to say, that's not me saying that. Fred was yelling at uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, oh, I don't know that one. Molly? Yeah. Molly, yeah. Because she was. Oh, she was, right, right. When she was pregnant. Yeah, Didn't yeah, yeah. Jimmy Kimmel once say something about Fred that was not so flattering? Yes. Yes. And he, so, well, he's, he would be great on this panel with us. Because he's right. kind of saying what we said. Yeah, Fred's overrated. He's not this genius. Stop calling him that. Yeah, Kimmel, Kimmel came on in the big point of contention. And the first thing they went to was Jimmy was like, I- I'm so sick of this. Fred is a genius. I don't get it. Okay. He's fine. And it's basically, he'd fit right in with us right now what he was doing. And they had a bit of an argument. And Kimmel backed off eventually, as you knew he would. But he was pretty strident in the beginning. So we're going to wrap this up. I just wanted to play a really quick thing. So we've been looking at everybody's Instagrams lately, and the best thing to come out in forever is Howard apparently sent a video or two to Beth. Howard couldn't figure out how to use a washing machine. So Beth thought it was the most hysterical thing she's ever seen in her entire life. You know, she puts in that all caps volume up because it's very important for us to hear what Howard has to say. And wow, wow with the nasal, real <laughs> Howard voice. <laughs> it's Kermit without the Darth. Here we go. Honey, what am I doing wrong here? Look, it says hold to start. Holding, holding, holding. It won't start. I don't know how to do it. Help me. <sighs> Jesus Christ. He didn't turn the on off button no, on, he did not turn by the way. Off button. How staged do you though? think this is? How. Yeah, because this reminds me of their um, Howard Ralph sending Summit. Howard sending uh, Beth a text that says, "I'm all horned up. Let's bang." I'm full of all the coffee. Yeah, how do I make coffee? Which you know he has staff that can make him fucking coffee. Well, and the best yeah. part is, in a twenty-two thousand square foot house, she literally could be in another like. Right. Zip yeah, and it's just funny. easier to text. It is. Yep. <laughs> That struck me as probably the mo- one of the most set up things that they've done in a while. The, it, it's like, no, he's not trying to use a washing machine. He, he, no, that's no, they, have five, they, they have crazy help, Dennis. We saw the picture yeah. that Gary Puppet had the overhead of their of uh, all the cars, house, and, and it's like, there's forty cars there, and they're all help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like he's doing. And this isn't like he just got a new washer and dryer. This is his first time ever washing and drying. Yeah, that's why I wrote. Grandpa probably shit his pants, so he had to, like, thump <laughs> yeah. really like, like, Wash it in the sink and leave it out like uh, Ray used to do. <laughs> leave it for the hell. Exactly. All right, so he the, 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 the microwave, right, with the lasagna. He couldn't yeah. do So now the new thing is we're going to do what commoners do and make and mock the commoners. It's the first time I've used this device exactly. or even tried to. So every exactly. three months. It's like the, it's like the cringeworthy segment on Comedians in cars, cars and coffee when they're like in the cereal. fucking supermarket. Right. Yes, yeah. Dennis. Yes. Yeah. All right. Here goes Cookie Puss. And guys, thank you so much for participating in tonight's show. Now you all know how we feel about Fred. And you got a little history on who he is and what he's like and what the real Fred man is. You know, a lot of people don't know this about Fred. But Fred, when I met Fred, Fred was a complete rube. I swear to God. And Fred can try and act sophisticated all he wants. When I hooked up with this guy, I met him in Hartford. Literally didn't know how to open a bank account. I got him his, listen to this, opened his first bank account for him, 
got him his job. He would still be in Hartford. Yeah. I got him his job, got him a wife, got him an apartment. And he's such a rube, he would go up to visit his mother on Mother's Day and buy her cookie puss for Mother's Day and think that this was nice. Yeah. He would get her a cookie puss. This was an appropriate Mother's Day gift, as far as Fred was concerned. For those of you out of town, that's a Carvel ice cream cake. <laughs> it's a cookie puss. That's a kitty cake. That's a real white trash gift. <laughs> and, 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 hey, Scott, can you set my harmonizer so I can talk like a cookie puss? This is, I swear to God, there was a commercial Tom Carvel used to come on. God rest his soul. This is Tom Carvel, speaking from the man. <laughs> and, and, and he spoke like that. He would go, this is Tom Carvel. This Mother's Day, I have a great idea. Get the cookie puss for Mother. So Fred saw the commercial, actually got his mom a cookie puss. Sure. And we Could goofed on him. I believe it. I thought he was joking when he first told us. I don't Hello? Hi. Hi. Yes. Come on, take it. <clears throat> this is Cookie Puss. Hi, Fred. Good morning. Hi, Fred. This is Cookie Puss. <laughs> Fred got me for his mother for Mother's Day. I'm a little cookie puss. <laughs> Do you know when I sit at Carvel on Mother's Day, every year they only sell one cookie puss? <laughs> <laughs> one little stupid ice cream cake. And that's the Fred. Other than that, nobody even would consider giving their mother cookie puss because it is so insulting. To buy your mother a cookie puss. And Fred fought us. He thought this was a good gift. Hey, yeah. fine gift. I'm trying to figure out how Fred decided on cookie puss over Tom the Turkey and Waller the Whale. Fudgy the Whale. Fudgy the Whale. It's funny. Mr. Carvel, every year, comes into the store and he brings in the mold that makes cookie puss. And on the mold, it's labeled Fred. <laughs> and I go to Fred. And I'm a cookie puss, and I, I am the only ice cream cake that is made specifically for the Norris clan. <laughs> and once Howard introduced Fred to his wife, Fred doesn't even go home for Mother's Day anymore. <laughs> he only visited his mother because he had nowhere else to go. <laughs> and each year at Carvel, we wait for Fred to show up. And we sit there, and the clock goes and goes and goes. Like right now, I'm waiting for Fred to show up. And he will show up on Mother's Day, the Cookie Puss. Once a year he comes. Yeah. And thank goodness for Cookie Puss, because Fred's mother wouldn't hear from him if it wasn't for him <laughs> sending that cake. Unfortunately, I have to deal with Fred's mother, not Fred. <laughs> <laughs> no one else uses the Cookie Puss mold. In fact, we grow flowers in the cookie puss mold. You might as well call it the Fred Puss. <laughs> puss. Yeah, they're thinking of changing the name. Now that that old coot, Ken Carvel is dead, we can actually change the name. But I am Cookie Puss, and I love Fred, because if it wasn't for Fred, I'd be out of business. <laughs> no one would ever see that mold alive. That's right. <laughs> Fred, you, when's the last time you saw your mother? Christmas. Christmas. Oh, boy. Oh, we used to go every weekend and give her gifts like cookie puss, but now you have a wife and you're a big shot. There you go. And now you hurt your mother's feelings, don't Can't you? Visit. Right. Well, that's very, very sad. <laughs> We're hoping that someday, on your anniversary, you'll give your princess a cookie puss. <laughs> And then I'll be back in business. <laughs> no way to mold yet, man. Yeah, that's right. God don't want me yet, man. <laughs> I got more cookie puss. <laughs> more cookie puss to make. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's Fred. And I'm Cookie Puss. And I want to thank everybody for hearing my story. That's Mitch Fatelli. He used to be my intern. Always told us he was going to be a comedian. You left our show. Yeah. You did one of the most brilliant things I think any intern has ever done. And, and, and normally I'd be pissed about it, but it was so brilliant. When Mitch would get really angry, and most of your anger was Fred, Fred that you didn't uh, like. Yeah. And you would <laughs> you know do a thing. A lot of Fred. I had no idea. You used to work the computer and keep the notes and the log for right. our show. Right. My job was, right. was I'd have to put in what was happening every hour. Right. When Mitch would get mad. He would do something called a time bomb. No one ever thought to do this. He would look ahead five years, right. and he'd write, you know, Fred is an asshole. 
I think one of them was like, I hope Fred chokes on a horse's dick and dies. I hope Fred's dead by now. Right. <laughs> so five years from, it didn't happen, Mitch. But, but I'm sorry. Now, I, I'll tell you why I was upset. I realized it, and it's like, and now that I've gotten a little older, I realize that, you know, I was the, uh, the lowest on the totem pole, and everybody else's job was to shit on the intern at that point. Because now I do it to people well, who were... that was part of the resume, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. And, Fred, and now Fred is rough on the intern. Well, I've gotten better. I, I really I don't have. know why you used to shit on I, the intern. I, you know something? I don't either, but that's 20 years ago, and I'm hoping that I've changed no, I even then. I even had to go to Fred. I think it was over you. No, no. It was about somebody totally different. Yeah, Fred was doing and, something But, you know, intern. it's like... On one hand, I, I felt like he deserved it. I probably acted badly with him. But Mitch, I always liked Mitch. Well, you know, no, I actually, I, I did. With I him, did like. Fred. But I guess I, I guess I wasn't goofing. I think the reason why I, I think the time bombs happened, and I'm think I'm sure you can relate to this. The time bombs happened because, of course, as an intern, I wanted it to be more than just clean your potatoes. So I used to try Mitch to used to clean my potatoes. Right. Right. And yes. I always did a good job on that. He I did. prided he myself did. on you that. You were one of the best. I remember you, the thing that happened with Fred, just that I thought I would clear up, was. Uh, when we had Milton Berle on, mm -hmm. and Milton Berle was a big guest for us at the time. He was a very, very, we didn't get a lot of huge guests. Right. And Milton Berle was one of our huge guests, and he went on this whole thing about how you're changing radio. Right. He made this own to try to be an adult, went to Scott and said, let's, let's take that clip and we can open the show with it. Good. So I went to Fred with the cart, all proud of myself, and I went to Fred and listen to that. Go fucking put that in. Fred puts it in and just stares at me while it's playing, and it ends, and he just, you were talking about condescending, Fred just goes, uh, yeah? And I go, well, I go, don't you think that's kind of good? He goes, well, what, what's good? What, I don't understand. What, what do you want me to do with this? I go, I go, I go, that's not cool. It gets really good. It gets really good. It gets really good. It gets Mitch, really good. If, if that well, I let him go. Oh, oh, we're so not even close to the end. <laughs> so, I, I, I think this is called settling this, this the score. Is, go is, ahead, Noam. This Nome. has been on my mind for 20 years. And I got to tell you, Fred. to the ass rape. Okay. So, anyway, so. So uh, Fred, and now to make it even worse, he keeps going. Why? Why are you having me listen to this? I go. Well, don't you think that that would be kind of fun to open the show with? Why? Why do you think? And he's just torturing me. I go. Well, I don't know. It's kind of Milton Berle talking about Howard. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't get it. I don't. Why do you think this is good? And he just kept torturing. Tor oh. I go. So all of a sudden, I'm beaten, and I'm like, it sucks. I suck. <laughs> I'm a fucking idiot. I've got to put this away, and I'm going to try See, to get it. But it gets even better. Go ahead. <laughs> so that's it. So we put it away, and it's done. Right. Right. And uh, years, uh, months go by, and we're cleaning out the office one day. Right. This is the moment I remember for the rest of my life. We're cleaning out the office, and we have tons of carts right. and drawers. And we're pulling them out, and we're playing them and seeing what they are, just finding All of a sudden, we put in this cart that's not even labeled, and it's Milton Berle talking about Howard. Right. And you go... Jesus, that's brilliant. What is that? Why don't we open the show with that? Fred? And Fred goes, yeah, that is brilliant. <laughs> I don't know whatever happened. Well, I don't even know where that's from. Oh and I'm God. sitting there, and I'm going like, walnuts. Yeah. Wow. yeah right. <laughs> and, 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 and that's the moment I go, I'm going to go in, and I'm going to set time bombs. Because I, like, I couldn't, I had to let it out wow. somehow. I didn't know where to put it. Wow, that's, yeah, and, that's a bitter intern. And Fred actually said, like, yeah, I remember putting that together. I remember that. I don't oh, know whatever no, happened to that. You want to know something? I don't have a good memory about a lot of stuff, but that's bullshit. No, and it's you not. Know it. Oh, now you're lying. Why don't well, you, you and Jay Leno go and choke on a horse's oh, dick? Fred. Fred, I've seen you in action with interns, and even when I Gary was, was first one, interviewed, you do torture oh, no, people. No, no, yeah, that's true, but really, I, would never, what, I would never do that. And plus, you took good material, and you didn't play it. No, I would never. And then, and then we previous, and then from that day on, we always opened the show with the Milton Berle Absolutely. clip. Absolutely, I remember that clip. I, I think that the 20 years has made this story a little bit better. You bet. What is your Bob I think he used to get mad at me because he used to goof on his laugh and the way he spoke. The first no, part of that story so. sounds totally believable, but to, but again, no knowing about how much time that wastes. I mean, really, Fred had too much time on his hands to sit there and goof on an intern. But Fred, but Fred like, didn't use to who's, go home who's using, stuff. I know, he used to stay at the office. It was so important to me. I cared so and much. And using your initiative. Let's yeah. encourage that. And then Fred. after that, I just was like, I'm just going to be a potato boy the rest of my life. You <laughs> tried again. I, I gave up. I just started writing time bombs.